Hello, and welcome to Reserve Inspiration's D&D, where my friends and I play sci-fi homebrew version of Dungeons & Dragons for your entertainment. My name is Aaron, your Galaxy Master, and I am joined this evening by my friends and players, Priya, Mike, Lauren, Kayla, our special guest, Pat, and of course, Sarah. And hey now, we air our new episodes on Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. But what if Friday doesn't work for you? That's not a problem. You can watch it anytime once it hits YouTube on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, and if you love our content and would like to help support us, become a patron on our Patreon and get access to new episodes Saturday morning. You know, the morning you have nothing going on. You know it. The morning after they air. Not only that, but you'll get bonus content and emotes as they're released. And if you're like super in love with what we do, you can also support us uh, by subscribing through Twitch. Twitch. If you have Amazon Prime, you get one free Twitch Prime subscription each month. It expires at the end of each month, so don't forget to keep sending it our way. And remember, it's free for you. Please like our videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave the comments below because we love it. The Adventures of Plonk, our other miniseries spinoff of this campaign, airs Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And each episode is immediately followed by our informational segment, Just the Tips. This Wednesday, Aaron will be taking you through how to get started writing your own homebrew campaign. Definitely check it out. If you want to keep up with everything else that we're doing, make sure to follow us on social media. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Just search up Reserve Inspiration. Give us a like and a follow. Keep up to date with all the news and everything going on. Also, if Discord is your thing, we've got a Discord server. Um, feel free to join that. The link is in our Twitch bio as well as our social media bios. Come talk about D&D with us. Share a meme. Have a laugh. It's a great time. And so for much today's... fun. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I was just saying so much fun. Oh. It's so much fun. It's so good. So many, so many laughs. Um, for today's space fact, I've talked a lot about the moons of Jupiter lately. I'm really stuck on them. They're really cool and I like them a lot. So I figured that I should give some more general information about them and say that there are in fact 79 moons in total. That's like 78 more than we have. Anyway. <laughs> That's a lot of moons. <laughs> 50, 53 of them have official names and there are another 26 that are waiting to have official names or at least like you know these are just the ones that nasa knows about currently there might be more you never know all right well thank you priya uh so before we get into the recap today um i did just want to mention uh as you are all watching right now you can see kind of hovering over uh gray Hod or pat at the moment is a beautiful pink border with hearts uh reason being is because he is currently charmed by emmy um and you may see other little overlays pop up uh throughout the game depending if you know someone takes too much damage or someone falls unconscious so it should be pretty fun to check out the different little uh things we're gonna have more coming um but i've been you know working feverishly on these so i hope you enjoy them i think they're pretty fun um but yeah i think it's time for a recap <clears throat> unless anyone has anything else they want to say no? Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> last time on Reserve Inspiration's D&D, <clears throat> in a space void of light and sound, you begin to hear someone's thoughts in the back of your mind. These thoughts belong to an interesting species, a Thrykrian, known as Tita. We listen while his mind wanders. Good thing I can hear myself thinking here, because I certainly can't hear anything else. This place is totally wild. If they wanted me to stop mouthing off, they could have just asked. I would have stopped. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I know when to stop. I wonder what everyone else is up to right now. Minerva came with me to talk to the Enlightened One, but that didn't go well, so they took her away. Shocker. I wonder if she's on her own, like in her own cell like me, or with the group somewhere. The Enlightened One said we were going into Drudger Hold. What the hell does that mean? Is he gonna try and turn us into slaves? Minerva and Gurk are not gonna go for that. Actually, none of us are gonna go for that. I'm assuming the group is together somewhere. They're probably making a plan to break out. Hopefully part of that plan is to break me out too. I don't know how much longer I can last in here. 
I say plan, but usually all of our well-thought-out plans just get us into more trouble. I bet Zinn's crafting stuff to help. She's great at gadgets and gizmos and usually thinks a little bit more rationally than, let's say, uh, Emmy. I mean, to be fair, Emmy's probably befriending everyone down there to try to make an ally or at least find someone to use as a pawn. But that also depends on how much she's schmoozing versus how much she's boozing. Speaking of boozing, second only to my love of Moss, I miss Frankie hardcore. I would love a few pulls from that baby before I die in here. Oh my God, speaking of dying, I hope Zox is okay. I mean, he's alive, so that's clearly better than the lump of dead he was an hour ago. The enlightened one wants me to teach him how to do that. I didn't even know I could do that. I didn't make that up, right? Like that really happened? Everyone saw. Well, everyone except Coop. Where the hell is that prick anyway? Not that I care, but I hope he's being helpful rather than an idiot. Bailing on the group with Minerva missing earlier? What a dumbass. <laughs> I just thought of something wicked funny. Wouldn't it be wild if they were all running around the halls with the guards keys releasing all the other prisoners? <laughs> they should do that. Whoa, Wh who's there? Wait, is that Girk? Is he carrying a dead body? Yo, Girk, what happened to you, Crean? <laughs> and that's gonna work. that's what we're gonna be picking up today. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, teacher. That was <laughs> fantastic. Um, so a little bit uh, of information um, on that note uh, would be we're only gonna bring it to the roll twenty screen here, uh, so you can all kind of see, and we can give a little bit of recap of where everyone is momentarily. Um, so we have. We have Tita is separated from the group in his own holding cell. That's like a solitary confinement. Uh, he was just recently busted out by Gherkin and they were in search of Nolgatane. He was recently reunited. <laughs> reunited. <laughs> reunited and it feels <laughs> Um, so yes, it reunited. Um, <laughs> Noga team is in some sort of state. She's, uh, you see, kind of uh, giving off the crazy vibe at the moment, you know, being in solitary confinement for so long and uh, not being able to see or hear and just kind of, you know, that'll, that'll do something to you for sure. Um, and currently there are a slew of guards heading in their direction. Have they seen Tita and Gherkin yet? We don't know. But everyone else, we have a situation where um, the rest of the party has broken free from their cell. Uh, and currently, Emmy is running around with the release chip to open up other prisoners' gates. Um, she is releasing them currently. I believe we ended with Minerva speaking to Morticia, who is a woman looking to uh, either purchase or uh, enlist the help of the cleric Nolgatam. Um, and there's also uh, our friend Greyhod, who's looking for some help to uh, locate, uh, save his brother, who is frozen in the impossible depths. So he's with the group as well. Uh, and everyone else is kind of just hanging out at the moment. Kubrick's there, Gurk uh, Modi's there, obviously Zinn and uh, Zaxa are there as well with this group. Um, and uh, last week kind of uh, happened with uh, with Emmy, she charmed Greyhawk and the, one of the guards, and they have uh, been pretty much doing everything that she requests. Uh, we last left off with them. They were currently at the door keeping watch, and Greyhawk got sick of the uh, the gentleman in his face yelling about how better he was. So he, you know, used his shovel and just, you know, hit him. And with that, uh, the, the door is opened and a bunch of other guards looked in and asked what was going on. So currently there's a bunch of guards outside where you all are. There's a bunch of guards where Tita and Gherkin is and it's just a big mess. But with being knocked in the face, that guard needs to roll, re-roll his saving throw for being charmed. And I believe he has advantage, Emmy, because he uh, was injured. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. I will roll one for now. Oh, hopefully it's advantage. Oh, you know what, Tita, you are currently at what, seven hit points? Uh, I believe that is uh, accurate, yeah. Oh, all right. Well, in that case, you are considered bloody. Oh my God. And well, you put that filter on now. 
Yeah. Oh, am I looking fresh to death? <laughs> <laughs> so everybody says no. <laughs> <laughs> all right yep there you are all nice and bloodied fantastic um everyone else is looking good though You're not dying yeah fine. Uh, yeah i mean i'm i'm always dying yeah i mean what's so your response far. emmy i was just reading into uh, what it does say and uh, it does say that if me or my companions do anything harmful to it it's at advantage why would he think that Greyhawk was one of my companions because Greyhot is doing everything for you. He's charmed by you. Therefore, he is, you know, one of you. He's following your every whim. He seems to be one of your companions. That's how I'm going to rule that one. Okay. <laughs> I, was just no, I don't think I don't think an 11 is going to beat your DC. So he is still charmed. And he kind of comes up just ready to start swinging. You see he grabs uh, this almost like a saber off the side of his um, hip. And it immediately just with energy, and he goes to strike at you, Greyhod. Oh, I block with my shovel. Well, we'll see. Well, I don't think so. Not with a twenty-one to hit. Ooh. Can I? Do you, this? Go, you don't. You don't roll anything. What's your armor class? Uh, twelve, I believe. Let me <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna. Yeah, he's gonna hit you. Can I see this happening? Um, you are probably 60 feet away. You could definitely see it happening, yeah. You can see the other guards that are entering, and, and it, as soon as we're done with this, we're going to roll initiative. So I hope everyone's uh, getting ready. If you want, you can start rolling now. Uh, but, Greyhod, you suffer... I'm going to take some of this as well. Uh, nine points of psychic damage and nine points of slashing damage as this uh, blade just rakes across your chest. Um, uh, so total 18? Total 18, yes. Um, now I need everyone to roll initiative. Wait, even me? Because I'm not with them, but yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you got stuff going on around you as well. No, yeah, I just didn't know if that was separate. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. I don't know if that's, uh, that's that sounds... what I like to hear. I'm scared. That's, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that sounds real bad. That sounds real bad. Um, all right. So, Minerva. 14. 14. That's it? Yeah, I know. Not my best initiative role. That's, I was going to say, that's pretty awful. I'm not going to lie. I, I, a... uh, I got a this dirty is an one. ability check, so you have a disadvantage. <laughs> Oh, I have disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's let's see if I roll a one instead of a two. <laughs> no, I rolled a four, so it's still a one. <laughs> You're gonna die. Um, <laughs> Tita again. Uh, I rolled a nat one. So I mean, if I get to add, I'm at a three. <laughs> okay. Well, you still go before me, <laughs> Tita. You know what that means. I get an iffy, <laughs> iffy tiffy. <laughs> that is indeed what that means. Oh my gosh, and so now how many do I have? You have 10. 10, Diaz. Oh, I we're asked buddies, you asked we're if buddies. <laughs> if I can, there we go. Nope, I guess not. I thought you were just about to start there. singing if I could turn back time, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, what was that? So you had natural one, what was your total again, sorry? Me, three. Yeah, three. Um, that Zim? You're gonna love this. It's a nine. Nine. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is iconic. <laughs> you guys, great. Uh, Greyhod. Uh, what do I add to my roll? It's initiative, so it should be kind of like, uh, top okay. middle-ish. Pretty big. It's whatever your dexterity, uh, modifier is. Oh, zero. Perfect. I got a 15. 15. All right. Hey, that's better than everyone so far. Yep. <laughs> uh, Emmy. Why is this the one time that Emmy gets, I rolled a 17 plus one, so 18. She wow. always goes like last. 
All right, so I'm going to run down the line here. Actually sleep, right? So I'm definitely half dead with only one key point left. That's what uh, Yes. Okay, great. Yep. <laughs> uh, Kubrick gets a 12. Uh, Modi gets, wow, Modi has a decent dex. Uh, 16. Because he's a king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gherkin. Come on, Gurk. 14. Gurk. Yeah, get it, Gurk. Minerva, what's your dexterity? Um, my dexterity is plus four. Oh, 18. Man. So Gurkin goes after you. That's right, um, he does. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, Nolg came. Oh, Nolg. With that 12 with Kubrick. Um, and then we got Morticia. Okay. She's not doing well. She's way at the bottom. Uh, and the party guys. Sorry, guys. I'm. I have so many things. We love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, after I roll these twenty-seven creatures initiative, we can get oh, started. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I, I have. I have all of your uh, NPCs that you're setting free from the prisons. Nice. A oh, word. Oh, good. Hopefully, yeah. they'll help us since we. Just How do they have the highest initiative out of almost everyone? Well, because they're well, jazzed. They're, they're waiting calm. to get out. They're they're calm. Calm. <laughs> This is They've their moment. They've been waiting yeah. for this forever. They are free. Yeah. <laughs> they are oh my God! Can I? Can, like, oh I my. wish I could start singing like the Eminem Six Mile. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. All sweet. right. I think I think I got everyone down. Who knows? I could have forgotten something, but uh, we got a lot, and they're all kind of jammed right in the center here. So this should be interesting. <clears throat> so not me. <laughs> uh, we have starting the initiative round. Uh, Tita, as you are with Gherkin currently, and you are you're you're looking over Nogatine, you see these soldiers coming in. You just hear in the back of your mind, "You should have cooperated. This will be very painful for you." And that's what you hear. Great, Emmy. wax on, wax off. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy, your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, so Emmy's gonna turn to everybody and uh, try motivational speech. Ooh. How long is that? A ten-minute thing, though. Uh, no, sir. This is third. Oh, uh, that is one hour duration. Oh, it lasts for an hour, but how long it does it take to do? One minute. Ah, okay. So you can start it now, but these guys are charging in. Well, Actually, I believe if I if I remember correctly, Minerva at the end of last episode said, "Do you have anything that can encourage these people?" And I believe you said you started while you were unlocking cages. I do remember saying that, yeah. So I will say Actually, let me roll. We'll see how many rounds you have left. It could be anywhere from one to four. Roll in a d4. <laughs> Just this round, as long as you keep doing it for the rest of this round, you can inspire them. <clears throat> All right, fine. That's within 60 feet. Okay, so that's a pretty big area um, on this map. So you're looking maybe this entire cell block plus a little more maybe. Uh, now, I don't know if it's just specific to only um, five creatures, or if this is additional. It does say choose up to five creatures within range that can hear you. So I don't know if that's specific. What are, what are the effects? Um, an affected creature is hit by an attack. It has advantage on the next attack roll it makes. Once an affected creature loses the temporary hit points granted by the spell, which is five. Uh, the spell ends for that creature. Okay. 
um, why don't you give me a performance check? Um, and and I, I will determine how many people uh, that it affects. Maybe, maybe uh, it can affect more people, but it won't be advantage. Maybe they get a plus two to all of their attacks. Okay, I got 14 plus two. 16, okay. I would say that you can get probably, how about this? You get the, the, the group of people that you were talking to last time. So the group of the halflings, the dwarves, uh, the three groups of orcs and the humans. Okay. Nice. It's a, it's a pretty big group. That's like 30, 40, almost 51 people that you can kind of do your thing with. Okay. And so I'm I'll say that's your talk. turn though. Okay, but can I also like words to go with it? I would love to hear what you have to say to these people. I'm gonna keep yeah, it. Please words. Yes. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, but I am going to definitely say, well now everybody, I do believe that one should be able to make their own bad decisions, not have them made for them. <laughs> 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 hear ears, uh, throughout the group um, at the moment you just have the one chip uh, are you passing it off to someone to keep opening or are you going to just continue to run around I'm just going to keep trying okay so yeah you keep moving around we'll say um, your next turn or maybe the next couple turns you can be doing that if that's what you want to do after Emmy, the prisoners who are released, they kind of run over uh, and they, after listening to Emmy's speech, they kind of run over to the group of the rest of you who are kind of congregated um, at the bottom uh, left-hand side of the cell block. Uh, and that would be what, Zinn, Zaxa, Kubrick, Morticia, and Minerva. And they kind of run up and you got the, uh, the dwarf with the, or the Duragar with his, the patch over his eye. And he's like, I don't want some play I can, I can see they're coming. Uh, and they just kind of stand there waiting orders from whoever wants to give them. Um, that is going to bring us to Modi. Uh, Modi's going to be like, ah, if they're coming in here, what, what, what's the plan, man? Are we fighting or, or, or are we, what are we surrendering? What's, what's going on? That's going to be his turn. Uh, if you want to, you could say like a quick sentence, Minerva. What, do you think a bunch of guards are going to see escaped prisoners and try to talk it out? No, we have to fight. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save one of my spell slots, though, so just in case someone dies, I can hopefully bring them back. Uh, that's Modi. After Modi, Greyhawd, you are currently standing uh, next to one of these soldiers, these Gith Yankee um, drudgers, if you will. Uh, he currently has a scimitar style sword out and you have your shovel and there are a, a slew of guards on the outside of the door that are looking to start barging in. What would you like to do? Uh, can I shut the door? Uh, well, the door is one of those whoosh doors. It's like psh, that goes up and or down. So you can't really close it. Um, there are, I'm trying to think if there's anything you could barricade it with. Not really. It's just kind of a an open doorway. Are they all armed with melee weapons? How far away are they from me? Uh, there's about there are two that are right in the entrance of the door, kind of peering in, like they're ready to just, like they're kind of observing the area uh, to see what's going on. And then you you can see maybe three or four more within five to ten feet of them, kind of hovering, trying to look in. You can see that on their hip they have the similar weapon to the one that just pulled out that sip that like lasery scimitar. Um, and then they also have some sort of pistol on their other hip as well. So it looks like they may have a, a melee and a ranged weapon. Oh, good. Um, I'm probably going to run back to where Emmy is as far as I can go. Okay. Um, as you do that, uh, the, unless you would like to use your action to disengage from the one that you're currently facing, he will be able to swipe out at you as a reaction. Um... So if I disengage, I can't run? No, so a disengage, you'd use your action so that you can kind of back away carefully so that they can't swipe at you, but then you can use your regular movement to move. You just wouldn't be able to double move. Yeah, so what's, what, where do I find my movement distance? Um, um, I believe so it's gonna, for you 25 feet for a dwarf. I'm going to disengage 
the guy, and I'm going to head back towards where Emmy is. Okay. You go in 25 feet? As fast as my little legs can carry me. Um, I want to make sure that this has got like a, what's the range situation on this? Oh my God. Yeah, the range is way off. I'd say like every 20 feet is five feet, according to this map, because this map is scaled way too, you know, way bigger. I don't know, it looks accurate to me. Bring you about there. <laughs> it looks accurate, yeah. Um, all right, so you get to about there, 25 feet-ish, because I said uh, to Emmy that they were about, you know, 60 feet from uh, yeah. where everyone was congregated. So after uh, Gray Hot, that was your action and your movement, any bonus action? Um, I'm pretty much just heading as fast as I can to where they are. Um, can oh, I, I do a spell in my bonus action? Uh, if, if it's a bonus action spell, certain ones are, certain ones aren't. It should say next to it. It might say BA or bonus action. It might say action, it might say reaction, depending on what the spell is. Um, yeah. But I will say this, Greyhide, you get to make a uh, wisdom save uh, against Emmy's charm since you got hit. It's not an advantage because it wasn't, uh, well, actually, technically that is an ally of her because, yeah, so you'd have advantage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 17. I think that's going to beat it. Yeah. All right. So Greyhot's charm falls. Sorry. Uh, so I think that's it, right, Greyhot? Yeah, that's it for me. Minerva, you're up. Fantastic. All right. So I want to use my movement to just get as close to the door that all the guards are coming in through as possible and like and like, you know, like stay very, very close to the wall of the cage that's there, but they're not going to be able to see me anyway because of my Gloomstalker traits that make me invisible to creatures that are relying on dark vision to see me. So I want to get close to the door mm -hmm. and I want to, I want to essentially wait and I want to hold my action until one of them tries to walk past. And if I'm allowed to do this, I want to try and disarm them. Okay, yeah, the, the roll will be more difficult, but you can certainly try, absolutely. Uh, so are you moving your regular speed? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna move like as far as 30 feet can take me close to the door. So you can get to, you can see Greyhot is hurriedly running toward you to go past you uh, as you uh, skitter off into the shadows. Um, there is, I will say this, uh, there is a bit of dim light coming in from the hallway but other than that, uh, it is pretty dark in here. All right, I'll I'll st I'll stay purposely in a shadowy place so that like if the creature is using dark vision, then I will register as invisible. Okay, so you're holding your action to attempt to disarm to the first one that passes you. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking for someone with a melee weapon. You got it. All right. After Minerva, it's Gherkin's turn. Uh, Gherkin is going to lift up. Nogatame into his arms. He's going to look at you, Tite. Be like, how bad is it? He's going to kind of like look down the hall. And you can, as you saw last time, Tite, you <laughs> saw about four or five of these soldiers uh, coming down the hallway toward you in the distance. You don't know if they saw you yet, um, but... Yeah, how far away are they from me? Uh, they're probably like, I don't remember if I told you last time, I would say somewhere between like 90 to 100 feet away at the moment. Um, so what did he just ask me how bad it is out here? Yeah. Um, can I do anything or not really? Because like it's not my turn. Um, oh, it is your turn. Oh, oh lie. sorry, sorry. No, it's Gherkin. Sorry, it's pretty much you answer him, and then he'll, um, he'll make his decision. So I can see what the this handful of people. Yeah. Um, they're they're definitely coming, Green. Uh, I don't know if they can see me. All right. Here. And he hands you a potion. Okay. It's a, a greater healing potion. Okay. And you see him begin to unstrap his gauntlets on his arm. Okay. You're faster than I am. Take these. And he hands you the gauntlets. Okay. And he's like, and take her. 
and hands you Noglatame. Okay. <laughs> I've seen you move. You can leap through the air. You can get over them. Let me deal with them and you get out of here. And those, and he points to these like heavy metal gauntlets. He's like, that'll be extra defense if you want. And he, he just cracks his knuckles and just kind of steps by you and prepares for the oncoming group. Okie dokie. Uh, that is Gherkin's turn. And that's can I say enough. anything else or no? Uh, can you want to say something else? Yeah, yeah, you can say something real quick. Um, I'll do my best, Cream. Like, I'll lean, like, meaning talking about Nog. Yeah, he, he kind of le- leans back and says, I'm trusting you, Tita. And if I'm not back to the ship, go get her to safety. And he kind of just pushes you a little bit to move for on your turn. Um, then uh, Emmy, uh, actually not Emmy, because Emmy is in her cell block letting people out. Zin and Zoxa, uh, give me perception check. Zoxa, I believe yours is a disadvantage due to your exhaustion. Advantage isn't going to matter, though. Especially when you roll a 19 and an 18. Ooh. Ooh get oh, it. Man. Uh, that is a 19. <laughs> get this. Uh, all right. Zin? Another nine. Nine. Fantastic. <laughs> that well, Zin, you're a little preoccupied. You saw Minerva kind of dart down the hall into the darkness, and you can see these soldiers kind of barging through. So you're kind of busy with that. Zox, the same thing happens, but you kind of see um, out of the corner of your eye the other way in the other direction in the darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see some movement in one of the cages, the far cages at the end, and it looks like these four armed uh, creatures have kind of come over to the cage. It's difficult to make out in the darkness, but they seem to be looking. Uh, and, and you hear one of them be like, um, can someone let me and the rest of us, my, 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 my family, uh, out of here. Um, and then it goes to uh, Kubrick. Kubrick's going to be like, okay. <clears throat> Haven't gotten my hands dirty in quite some time. I think it's, uh, I think it's about time. So Kubrick is going to uh, brandish his rapier. Oh, lies. He can't have a sword on the ship. He does not have a sword. He is going to be like, ah. I've seen Tita and, and Gherkin do this. And he kind of puts his fists up and gets ready. Yeah, Zoxa um, saw that too. Just. <laughs> and he is going to start heading down the hallway and kind of making a defensive stance in the middle of the hallway. Um, just, you know, preparing. He kind of like looks back and winks at Morticia, who then <laughs> rolls her eyes once he turns back around. Um, and then we have uh, Nolgatame. Nolgatame in your arms, Tita. Yeah. She is just blabbering nonsense. She's like, the do- darkness is an endless void. <laughs> darkness just, just rambles. You can't really make any sense of what she's saying. She's just talking about darkness and, and you know, silence and whatever else. Um, uh, not necessarily convulsing, but she's definitely something she's kind of freaked out. Okay. Um, and now the gift go. <clears throat> I, can I take one of my little arms and just like rub her back? <laughs> well, you're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're current. How are you carrying her? Like fireman's carry or like what's, what's your, um, I don't know. I'm carrying a lot of things. So, <laughs> well, you have four arms. So I would say what well, you get the potion in one, you get how, the wait, in another, and you got her in the other. T- <laughs> how large is she? Uh, she is fairly small. She's a little bit taller than Plonk. Um, can I almost hold her like she is a small child, <laughs> like, like, like to like one cradle. side, so that way, like, yeah, you know, like how you would hold like a baby, oh, like over your shoulder, kind of thing. No, or, no know, like, like if she's like sitting on my box. hip, like, so I use that. Okay. I have my two arms holding her. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, it's sure. Like right. when a kid wants to be like picked up, and so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, yeah, she's kind of, yeah, that's actually better. She can be kind of in front of me, like koala hugging me. That way I have all four arms that could, cause I don't need all four of them to hold her. So at any time I could just have two free and two holding her. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Juggling the other stuff. Yeah, exactly. So now as that happens, the gif begin to move in. They begin to circle <clears throat> through the room. 
And then we got these two making their way down the hall on the other side. Making their way down, down, down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this guy, a lot of them tonight. <laughs> this guy, still charmed by Emmy, not knowing what to do, is going to kind of like look back for her and not see her and just be like, doesn't know what to do. He kind of yells out, oh, They're coming in. Uh, but he doesn't because you told him to keep watch, he's keeping watch, and that's he doesn't know what else to do. Uh, the rest of them, though, begin to pour in, <laughs> two of them push by. Um, one of them is just barely going to get behind you, Greyhawk, and take a swipe. Um, <clears throat> That's a okay. 19 to hit your armor class. So my armor class is a 12. Okay. Uh, so that will be 11 points of psychic and 10 points of slashing. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at five, um, so you can put the bloody thing on me. Hold on. Uh, what are you currently at so I can update your hit points on roll 20? Five. Oh, that's significantly less than what you had. Well, I yeah. that's, that is how that goes. Yeah. Something and then you... That's how subtraction works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got bloody on Greyhawk. Um, after the they go, uh, the rest of them need to pour in. Um, one is going to run by Greyhawk and is not going to be able to do anything but just get to Kubrick. Ooh, does it pass me though? It does pass you, Minerva. <laughs> cool. I'm going to action. Your held action goes off. Your trigger. Hey, what does an at will spell mean? Like a cantrip. How does that you can work? do it as often as you want. So there's no limit. Like with the with your first level spells, you have a certain amount you can do per day. The cantrip you can do as often as you want. Okay. So what do we got, Minerva? Oh, what do you need me to do? Uh, you said you're trying to disarm. So uh, are you trying to disarm and grapple, or just disarm, get their weapon on the ground, and like continue to face them face to face? I want their weapon to be in my hand so I can stab them. Okay, so I would like for you to roll uh, an athletics check with advantage because you are uh, hidden from this creature. Uh, they will get either athletics or uh, acrobatics, which Ooh. I'm pretty sure is only a two for them. All right, so... I rolled a 17 total. I rolled 16 plus four, dirty 20. Yeah, so he's he comes. Uh, this this Gith Yankee uh, soldier comes running down the hallway past uh, Greyhound. Which Greyhound, if you want, you can also swipe out as your, a reaction at the guy who passes you. It's up to you. Well, I don't want to hit them because I'm intending on telling them now that I'm not a prisoner and I don't know these people. <laughs> I'm, I'm not with them. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> um. Or surrender, or uh, like I don't want to fight them now. Oh, yeah, that's probably a smart idea. Um, but so that was okay. Here you go, Minerva. What did you? You got okay. So yeah, Minerva. You, as this guy's running by, you kind of stick your foot out, and he kind of trips. And as he does, you grab his arm, holding the weapon, and with your other hand, you just wrestle it free, and he kind of spins facing you. And he's like. Ah. You're gonna regret that. Um, and I would say that's your that was your held action. You now have that weapon in your hand, ready to go. And it's just like uh, thinking of it as a scimitar, like a, a like an energy scimitar. Ooh, all right, it's spicy. Um, if are you proficient with scimitars? Uh, let me look. I believe so. I'm, yeah, I'm proficient with martial weapons, simple weapons. I'm assuming Fantastico. it falls under one of those. <laughs> yes, it most certainly does. Um, all right, so now I need to release uh, a figure here. Is it a, I just, like, I want to add it so that I know I have it. Is it a regular scimitar or is it a double-edged scimitar? Uh, it's just a regular okay. scimitar. Oh, yeah, we're not that fancy. <laughs> Didn't think we were, but I thought I'd check. <laughs> um, all right, layer, token layer. So as you are all standing there and you see these uh, blue Githyanki begin to charge in, 
Uh, Minerva, as you wrestle that out of its hand, you kind of look up at the soldier, the rest of the soldiers charging in. And behind them, you can see entering through the doorway that mind flayer creature with the red skin and the, the cut off tentacles. Nice. Uh, and he just enters, surveys the area, and he's like, <sighs> You are really going to be trouble. He's going to just kind of stand there and watch to see what the soldiers do and see what you all do. Um, after the Mind Flare, Zanessi, you are up. What would you like to do? And keep in mind, you don't have to fight. It's true. But you most certainly can. So. Had a lot of time to think about this. No. And I still don't know what the best course of action is. I was going to ask you. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I don't want to die, but it looks like it's going to have to be that way. So, I mean, I have all of these people around me that are kind of, that we just freed. Mm-hmm. I guess. And they asked me what, would, what they should do. So I think... Yeah, they haven't gotten an answer yet, so... Yeah. I think... Uh, I'm gonna look around at them and be like, Danielle, get, are you fighters? Do you have magic? What can you do? Uh, they all, <laughs> uh, let me see. They, they all kind of just like look around at each other and then at their hands with like no weapons or anything. And a couple of like of the Duragar are like, oh, we could definitely take someone in a scrap, but eh, there's a lot of them coming in. So. Right. Uh, Okay. Um, just uh, uh, stand behind me for a second, and she's going to um, start crafting an Eldritch Cannon. Oh. Um, and I think it's going to be the Force Ballista. Okay. So that's Very that nice. Off. Very nice. Force Ballista, go for it. Now, that is uh, an action to do, or is it a bonus action? That's an action. action to do. So yeah, you start you start grabbing all different pieces off of your chair and kind of putting them together. You make like the little tripod stand and get the the cannon piece out and start to prepare that for your turn. Anything else? Um, hold, please. So since it took me an action to make it, can I use the bonus action to kind of have it move? Because yes. Okay. So. I'm going to do that. So I make this little thing and uh, it can move like, I want it just like on the ground, like five feet in front of me. Okay. All right. little feet. Um, I believe I have a little item that we can kind of use. Give me one second. Um, copy that. All right. Very good. Uh, how far away are you moving that Zen? Like, not very far, five feet. Okay, just kind of near you. Uh, it's pretty big. I'm going to turn off the light that it gives off, but just so we know where it is. Okay. And then I want it facing the soldiers also. All right. Uh, can you guys see that glowing? No, perfect. All right. Uh, facing the prisoners, you got it. No, oh, the... Soldiers, not the prisoners. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In front of the soldiers. <laughs> yeah, it was facing towards the prisoners, you know. <laughs> oh my god. Let them out. Um... Them out. <laughs> All right. What are we doing here again? <laughs> um, <laughs> Minerva appearing out of like a, a, a dark mist, let's kind of with a hue of red just next to you is Morticia. Nice. She's like, so what is going on here? Am I helping you? Are you helping me? If you come with me and help, I will help you leave here, but that is the only way. Listen, if you want any chance of that cleric helping you, you're gonna make sure that this doesn't turn into a massacre. It is either you help me and I help you or I walk away. That's your decision. Deal. She puts her hand out to you. 
to kind of shake. And you see as she grips your hand, this red energy begins to kind of glow around your hand and she uses her nail and kind of runs it down your arm to draw blood. And she just can't break that pact now. And as she does, she turns um, and whips out uh, this a blade that she had hidden uh, under her uh, cloak. And you see it glow with red energy as she runs it across her own skin. Uh, and she gets ready to, you know, to fight. Um, that's Morticia. Tita, your turn. Yay! You see a bunch of guards heading down toward you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, um, can I, <coughs> I think I am going to, let's see where I am. Oh, great. Okay. <coughs> um, I'm going to go, can I go around the corner? Like uh, yeah. away, away from the people. Yeah, what's your speed? So my regular speed is, I believe, 55. It is 55. 55, so that cuts down to uh, 20. Because I'm carrying this person. Yeah, unless you want to double move. So I can get... Oh, like, don't forget, we're, we're doing different lengths. I'll just move you however far you want to go, because this thing's weird. Don't worry about the oh, measure. So I want to go as far as I can go, carrying her around all okay. the way. What I'm asking you, do you want to use your action and your movement? I don't know yet. I want to see how far I can get. And then <laughs> <laughs> oh, regular movement? That's your 20 feet right there, carrying her. Um, then yes, I will double move so I can whip around the corner a little bit. All right. Uh, you still have a bonus action. You could, if you wanted to, use a key point to, uh, or you could drink your potion as a bonus action. Uh, can I put the gauntlet things on? Uh, that's going to take way more than. All right, then I will. I will drink action. my potion. All right. So uh, roll four d four plus four, and or you regain that for hit points. <clears throat> uh, that's Tita Zaxa. Last one in initiative order. Your turn. All right. Um, how far away are those guys to the door again? You said about 60 feet. Um, well, they've moved in. The, Perfect. The, the Mind Flayer is right in the doorway. Uh, and he is uh, roughly from you, maybe like 60, 65 feet away. Cool. Uh, can you give me a, let's see, 10 foot radius ring around where they are so I can see if like that'll hit everyone um, maybe uh, that won't hit everyone you could probably I would say you can get maybe three of them together okay I want to make sure it gets the red guy okay so if that's the case I would say two because um, but how far away they are from the door uh, there's only one that's kind of close to it. So you can get the red guy and then one of the other guards. Hmm. <clears throat> it's your choice. You can either hit three guards or the, the big guy and one guard. I'll hit three guards actually. Okay. Um, the, the middle three, if, if you know what I mean. Not I the guy actually. behind Greyhawk, <laughs> oh, yeah, not yeah. the guy furthest back, the three in the middle. Um, I'm and picking I'm going up to what you're putting down. I'm going to hit them with uh, Magnify Gravity. Ooh, okay. At a third level. Okay, so that you can hit all of them. Uh, is that what, strength saves? Uh, constitution saves. Constitution saves, <laughs> oh boy. They need to beat a 14. Well, chances are slim. That is, that is excellent news. That first one, um, I'll have you know, is a natural one. Good, good, good. Uh, the second one, uh, that's a natural 19. So I think that one's going to be fine. Uh, and the last one is another natural one. So two of them 
Two of them fail. Real bad. Okay, cool, cool. Um, wow, that's fantastic. I got to roll um, 4d8, mm-hmm. and that's a whole big six damage to anyone who failed. Wow. Because I rolled a one and a two and a one and a two. Ooh. And, um, <laughs> but their speed is halved until the end of their next turn. Oh, okay. Remind me of that on their next go, because I'm not going to lie, probably will forget. I will. And um, the other guy who passed gets half Three. damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and no speed reduction. Okay. All right. Very good. Nice job, Zaxa. After, uh, oh, that brings us back to the top of the round. Tita, in the back of your mind, do you really think you are going to escape here? Um, and then Emmy, you're up. Can I say something out loud, even though he's not going to hear me? Sure. He can read your lips, probably, depending on what you say. <laughs> Better than anyone I know. What? <laughs> say stuff out loud. Um, yeah, after he says that, I will just kind of like to the nothing. Uh, I guess you don't know us very well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, Emmy. I mean, we've gotten out of a ton of messes, guys, so I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling we have. <laughs> uh, Emmy, if you take two more turns, this one included in that, then I would say your entire cell block can be released. Uh, uh, you're muted, I think. Uh, maybe not. Yeah. No? Okay. Um, so I feel like she's she would know better than to just release like a crap ton of people or creatures like with no direction so as a with captain experience i feel like she would try and put them all in one cell block like try and convince everybody to get into one cell if they can to hide themselves and give one person like Maybe if she could roll like a perception check to see who looks the most trustworthy. Uh, insight. Roll an insight check okay. for me. Which I think is actually better for you, right? Thank you, sir, because that was a four. So <laughs> it's now a 12. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you've had some contact with a few of them. You don't think the halflings are necessarily the most trustworthy? Uh, but you see the, the dwarf with that patch over his eye, he seems like a very trustworthy fellow. He's, okay. he's, a, he's an elder. You think that he might be uh, good to be in charge of that. All right. So I'm going to try and convince everybody to get into one spot together mm-hmm. and okay. just can't, like just hold the key up and tell everybody, listen, I feel like the only way we're ever going to get out of here is if we all work together. I'm going to give this right here. This is how you get out. To this guy. And uh, I'm, uh, I can do it. I, I, shh, hide it. Hide it. Uh, <laughs> Y'all need to wait until we know what to do. Uh, so they're all ducking into one cell. Are we going to the back of the. Uh... Uh, yes, I don't. I, I want to try and evade whatever emotion is going on down there. All right, that's Modi. Modi would have stepped out. Like, I don't know the biggest one if it's like down over here or okay. Yeah, I'm kind of throwing them all in the, in the north there. So you're over there with them? Yeah. All I right. want to give all of them the opportunity to fight on their own if it comes down to that rather than everybody just scatter and nobody knows what's happening. Okay. Uh, very good. So you are with them um, after Emmy. Uh, it is their turn. They're kind of following you. Uh, a lot of the orcs, they're, they're, most of them are larger, uh, like heavier build and whatnot. And they're like, we'll fight for our freedom, no matter what, till the death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the dwarves, yeah, the dwarves definitely seem like they are ready to fight as well, the uh, Duragar. Uh, the halflings are kind of hesitant. The humans, they, they, they're they like, uh, we, we just have our hands, but... Uh, We'll definitely help in whatever way we can. And the halflings, you know, eh, if you, we, we could just, you know, hang out here and, and, and kind of keep an eye. We, we keep an eye. 
We're good at that. Keep an eye, yes? That's right, work to everybody's strengths. I like this. I like where this is going. All right, prisoners. Uh, that's all of them. Modi is like, all right. Oh, uh, that dwarf uh, fella doesn't look too good over there. Should I, uh, should I maybe help him? Is he our ally? I don't know what's going on. Who's Modi talking to? <laughs> Just whoever is willing to answer him. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, all right. Uh, well, how close do I have to get here? Let me see. <laughs> I feel like everything he ever says is basically in the like, I need a little help here. Like that's always that. that's kind of like the, oh no, kind of overtone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. all, right. all right, yeah. I'm coming. I'm gonna move. He's gonna get right behind Kubrick. And for now he can't get there to do anything. So he's like, I don't know what this wand is gonna do. It's it's unpredictable, but uh, hopefully it does good. And he kind of holds it out and fires. Uh, what do, what do we what do we get here? Because it has multiple options. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yes, I'm what obsessed is... with this. <laughs> oh yeah, Greyhide, you might be. Oh, actually, no. He's he's smart enough to angle it at the right spot. All right, so it you see this tiny out of this wand he has this tiny bead of orange light fly out and just and right over by the door where that red skinned creature is, it just kind of is about to land and you see that creature like ah, and kind of turn away quickly as just an explosion fireball. Uh, rockets out and hits all of the soldiers um, as well as that mind flare. Let me roll some saving throws. Very lucky because otherwise it could have been a lightning bolt that was shot out of there and Greyhod and Kubrick would have been hit pretty hard. So I love me. Hasn't Kubrick been punched yet? Like he's so <laughs> close to everybody that could Ooh. punch him. Stand by my uh, two fails. Uh, that's two more fails. Uh, that's a success. And then for the big guy, easy success. All right. So. <laughs> I'm good. To the Modi. <laughs> it's still a king. That's not king. <laughs> what the hell wand is that? <laughs> um, it is failed experiment wand. Nice. Mm. Respect. <laughs> well, let, me, let me just bring my dice tray over here to count because there's so many uh, so many dice so many I can't even act like I wouldn't have done the same thing <laughs> Gosh, um, what does so, this do <coughs> bang right, <yeah>. oh <laughs> so you see one of these guys still standing after the smoke clears <laughs> Uh, as well as the other guy who barely took, actually he didn't take any because he has evasion. So, so when you say failed experiment wand, yeah, are you sure it was failed? <laughs> well, I... What was the experiment if this was a failure? <laughs> right? You don't know at this point. It was a happy little accident. <laughs> um, where are these halflings at? Oh, they're right here. That, I was like, why? They should be with the group. Come on. There we go. Um, okay, so yeah, after who's like, oh, that worked out really well. Um, <laughs> after Modi, Greyhide, you're up. You just got all the ones behind you just <laughs> blasted away into a cloud of just embers and smoke. This is such a mess. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to so Resurgence the, the rest of them are far away. Um, right. There's one about 10 to 12 feet ahead of you about to swipe at Kubrick. And then there's one about 15 to 20 feet behind you as well as that red-skinned Mind Flayer. All right. Um, I'm going to scream for help <laughs> and be like, they, they charmed me. They're not, I'm not with them. Get me out of here. 
Uh, give me a persuasion check. Persuasion. Oh. <laughs> <Well. Ooh. laughs> persuasion. Well, let's see what happens. <clears throat> oh, a natural 20. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I don't know these people. <laughs> um, yeah, so a little help here. <laughs> you see, uh, one of the guards, the guard who uh, was like fight, fighting back and forth with you, he's the only one left by the door. Um, he, he's like, "This is true. I was there. Uh, the witch, she put a spell on us." Uh, and yeah, so that's that is uh, that's what he says after Greyhod says that. Anything else you'd like to do, Greyhod? Move. Yeah, I'm gonna cast um, light around me since it's dark. Ah, okay, very nice. Give me one second to. That's a twenty foot radius of bright light, right? Yeah, for one hour. So then I think on this it would be because it's got dim light as well. Um, yeah, that should be. Let's see how big that. That's way too big. Yes, I'm very good at light. <laughs> right through the walls. <laughs> uh, it's still kind of big, but it's closer to that. There we go. That should be... That seems still a little big, but... Oh, actually, no, because it gives 40 feet dim light, too. So you got, you got some light going on. Uh, and as that happens, Minerva, you are now in bright light. You're cramping my style, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it all, it's almost like Morticia is also like, ah, as the light is bright around her, she's like, ah, why? Both Minerva and Morticia just recoil. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to have a beer an hour and a half ago. And here I, am. I, don't, I don't have sympathy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Minerva, it is your turn now. Fantastic. All right. So can I maneuver myself into a <laughs> position around this guy so that I may be flanking him with Kubrick? Uh, yeah, you certainly can. Amazing. All right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark on him. And I am going to make my two attacks. With this scimitar. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So what does flanking do for me again? Uh, you get advantage on the attack. Nice. Okay. On both, in fact. Nat 20. Hey, get yeah. Nat 20 on the first attack. Okay. All right. So that's going to uh, be... Well, before, before you roll the second one, let's do some damage just in case. Let's do some damage. Just in case. All right, so uh, nat 20 is like the max damage plus another die. Plus what, however many die you would roll. So the hex also counts toward it. Oh, it does? Oh, Hunter's Mark? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Hunter's Mark. She, sorry. Oh. Morticia has hex. You have Hunter's Mark. You're a ranger. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the scimitar is 1d6 plus 4. So it'd be 10 and? from there six from hunter's mark and 16. then would i roll the scimitar again because it and the hunter's mark i'd roll both again yeah all the die all right okay so hey this is my rule it's 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 uh fatal usually against enemies but it's also fatal against you when i crit so yeah, yeah i know all right all right <laughs> <laughs> um and like it, it's just another roll of the die not like the modifier to the weapon correct okay all right so, ooh, all right. So I rolled a two and a five. So that's going to be an additional seven points on top of that 16. Seven points on top of the 16. So that three. Uh, 23. Ooh, he is barely standing. Great. Good thing I've got another attack. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh, God, what the, uh, and he kind of grits his teeth in your direction. Go ahead, make your second strike. My second strike is 12 plus 7, 19. 19 hits, yeah. You, nice. don't even need, you don't need to roll damage. He has three hit points, and I know Third. that's less than your minimum. So you I just, love... with the scimitar, 
just across and he across his back and he just collapses to the ground without another breath. Thanks for your sword. I love that you killed that man before Kubrick even got to touch him. <laughs> Kubrick's just yeah, like, I, I got this, I got oh, this. What? Oh. <laughs> you filleted um, that guy and then Modi turned the rest to ash. What? <laughs> Thanks, Kubrick. Uh, Gherkin is going to, he can't get to them. He's going to move half his distance and he's going to use one of his last key points to take patient defense, waiting for them to uh, come at him, bro. Come at him, bro. Um, <laughs> and right, at, <laughs> after that, uh, the, the, the creatures with the four arms in that cell, uh, please, we have children in here. Someone, someone let us out. Um, and that's going to be uh, Kubrick now. Kubrick's like, Get Minerva. <sighs> All right, well, fine. What do we got? These two left? And he's going to point his finger at them. Um, and he is going like, to- You guys. <laughs> you two. Oh, you. <laughs> um, where is it? Uh, he is going to- And Minerva still doesn't have her mask, so she just gives Kubrick a little smile. <laughs> um, Kubrick's like, well, yeah. He, he's going to step up to uh, Greyhod. And he's going to be like, I know you're a very proud and manly dwarf, uh, my friend, but do you mind? I can help you a little bit. And he kind of holds his hand out to touch your shoulder, if you'd let him. What are you doing? <laughs> Trying to heal you, my friend. Uh, I got to touch you, though. I'm, I'm hardly in a place to refuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, he'll grab your shoulder. Um, and what is his highest level? Okay, we'll do that. Uh, wow, okay, nice, Kubrick. Uh, you will regain 14 hit points. Okay, Kubrick. Zach, hope you're feeling a little bit better because uh, I can hear more footsteps. And as he says that, the few of you that are in that corridor can hear more footsteps from the hallway coming. Nice. Uh, after Kubrick, uh, it's going to be Nolgatame, and uh, as you're carrying her, TT, she's just like, she's coming. The darkness is coming. Um, yeah, that's 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 her. Uh, now the Gith's turn. So these guys charge in at Gherkin. Two of them get right up to him and begin to start swinging in his direction. Well, the rest of them pull out some sort of pistols and begin to fire. F in the chat for Gurk. <laughs> what a man. Uh, they have disadvantage because of his, oh, it's a miss. Second one, miss. Miss. Natural one. Let's see if they hit their ally. <laughs> they do. And the last one is a miss. So, uh, all right, never mind. Oh, I guess they're stormtroopers. <laughs> They've got the best. <laughs> Literally, ten people in a row just were like, "Nope." <laughs> well, because like, he, he used uh, one of his last two key points to get into a defensive stance, so everyone attacking him had disadvantage. So he's just blocking everything coming his way. Swan him like a plug. Get out of here. <laughs> Tita, as you are rounding, kind of you just barely started to round the corner, you can see two troopers running down the hallway in your direction. Um, they get to about here and they're kind of, you see them, they're kind of looking back and forth into the cells. And at this point, the lights are on. Okay. They have, they have put the lights on. And as you're passing by other cages, you can see very thin, lithe, like gaunt, uh, purple skinned creatures with the tentacled mouths just reaching out like oh. right. um yeah it's all those little frail things that Ursula keeps in her yes <laughs> yes oh, poor unfortunate oh, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> so this one that's left uh he he looks to the red skinned uh, creature who just has his arms crossed after just kind of throwing himself aside when the fireball went off. And the creature's like, well, what are you waiting for? Get them! 
And he's like, ah, ah, and he, he begins to, uh, yeah, he begins to run to toward, <laughs> toward everyone. Um, how, there was 14. Let me just make sure Greyhawk gets his uh, hit points back here. Yeah. Looks I said bad. 14, right, Greyhawk? So I'm at 19 now. Yes. All right. Perfect. Okay. You're updated on there. Um, he's going to run up to you, Greyhawk, um, and he's, He's gonna be. He's gonna kind of look past you, at Kubrick. And uh, no, actually, no. Kubrick, the only one there that's an enemy to him at the moment. Kubrick was one of the people who came in to look at the slaves. At the moment, Minerva is the only one. So he's gonna swipe at you, girl. Let's do it. Two strikes coming your way. Uh, oh, I don't think either is gonna hit. I rolled two sixes plus. Four, that, nope, two tens. I don't think it's going to hit you. Absolutely not. So he's just swiping out at you and you're just quickly dodging back and forth with the swipes. Uh, maybe you parry one with your blade. Um, and you can, as this is happening, the, you can hear like that other creature kind of grit his like sharp pointed and all like a circular point teeth. like. Um, and yeah, it moves. Oh, it's actually his turn now. Okay. So boy, oh boy. Get coming. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's a he's a, he's a he's a fella. He's. <laughs> we'll see what he can do. For some reason, I don't have him up. Just bear with me one second. Wait, the red dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I pissed him off earlier. Let him at me. Oh yeah, no, he's he knows he's Good. he hate he hates you. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah he is he is going to actually what is uh is this a save for you let's see um oh is there no save it just happens Ooh. oh i love that <laughs> uh you just see him kind of flick his finger upward and you just start to oh float up into the air and he just kind of throws you 30 feet down the hallway. Bye. <laughs> um, I need, uh, actually, I'm no, just going to take it. You kind of hit the ground and slide at um, uh, Modi's feet. He's like, hey man, how's it going? <laughs> not as, I look up at him and I'm like, not as bad as it could be. <laughs> uh, you suffer 12 points of bludgeoning damage as you get thrown back. Right. And then the creature from that far, far distance, you just see him grin and be like, come on, I thought you were better than that. Um, oh, and yeah. Zanessi, you are up. Oh yeah, all right. So I just saw that go down. I am going to take my action to use my Radiant Soul feature. So, she now has wings and her eyes are glowing. Mm. Um, so she's gonna fly. How high are the ceilings? Uh, they are about, I would say about 15 feet tall. Wow. So she's gonna kind of like fly just so she's up out of her chair and kind of like up higher. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna look at the red guy way back there and be like, this doesn't have to end this way. You said you wanted to talk, let's talk. I don't, we, this isn't right. You say you're about peace. This is not peaceful. Um, give me a persuasion check. Um, I am gonna say at disadvantage because of his current demeanor with all of you, this is like the third time you've all tried to do something. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> The third time, I was only, I only remember two times. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Um, maybe you were dead for some of it. I was going to say, maybe you missed one while you were dead. That's, <laughs> I was trying to be nice, but I guess Pat doesn't care. <laughs> well, no, it was, it was Minerva sneaking around no. illegally in their lower level. And then, oh, I wasn't part starting, of that. Then Zox is starting the fight in the Yes, elevator. that was the one. Uh -huh. And then now, this, you guys are causing trouble. What was that, persuasion? Uh, yes, please. Okay, so that was a six plus two, so eight. Time has passed for things like that. 
and you see him pull up this uh, his pistol type thing that has like a a, a wire or some sort of uh, tube that kind of connects to something on his back, and he just aims at getting ready. Uh, but it's still your turn. Okay, so she'll go. All right, have it your way, and then I won't. Hold on. What can I do here? It's about 60-ish feet from him at the moment. You have a good range on that. Okay, hold on. Range spot. He's 60 feet away? Uh, yeah, it's 60, 65. It's hard to tell. Okay. I'm just, I want the force ballista to do something, but it says range spell attack, but it doesn't give me a range. Oh. So... The limit does not exist. <laughs> range spell attack inflicting 2d8 force damage and pushing the target creature up to five feet away from the cannon. Mm. Oh, there's nothing oh. there. Let me see. I don't want to waste time uh, looking it up, but this is important because if it is not that far, well, actually, what is your what is your cannon's movement? How much can you move it each turn? Uh, little guy can move fifteen feet. Okay. If I can't hit the red guy, I want to hit the little soldier. Okay. Spells of Eldritch Cannon. Um. Oh, did you open up in its full entirety? No. Uh, you said force ballista. Yes. 120 feet. A word. Okay. Flamethrower is 15 him. foot cone, 120 foot for the force ballista, and the protector, it, well, it's not a ring, it's uh, within 10 feet of it, you get like a bonus. <clears throat> so that's, yeah, you should be good. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to fire that off at the red gentleman. Um, <laughs> And that's, does that only hit him or does it hit everybody in like a range? Force radius? Ballista is one target. Okay, cool. So I'm aiming at him. Okay. That is 2d8. And because she is using Radiant Soul, give me a moment. She can add one attack or spell deal six and additional Radiant Damage. So she's going to do that also. Nice. Uh, do I need to make a save? Is it attack roll? What's... Well, let's see. Make a ranged spell attack. So you gotta roll to hit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And add your spell right. attack bonus. Spell attack bonus. Please, 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 please. No, why? <laughs> God damn it. Um, that's not gonna hit. That's a four plus two. Oh no, it is not. You are correct. All right. Um, I hate it here. <laughs> No, he's got a he's got an AC higher than that for sure. Okay, higher than four plus two. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's uh, <laughs> anything that's else then? <clears throat> Pretty sure that's all she can do. So she's gonna be there in the sky, angry. <laughs> Empty threats. Um, all right. So after your turn, Morticia. Oh well, now she is ready for action. <laughs> she is going to I'm not going to use that yet <laughs> okay um, she is going to try to swing twice with her scimitar which is glowing with that red, red energy uh, the creature that's right nearby the first one is a hit second one is a hit and as she does that she actually runs the blade across her own skin once again um, seems to suffer some damage from that. Um, and then, yeah, with uh, two just <laughs> strikes, you see this, this uh, remaining Gith Yankee fall to the ground, just collapse, and then she just focuses and begins to start to manipulate his body, and it kind of stands up and charges toward the red-skinned uh, creature uh, and makes two strikes at him. I love bloodbending. We love bloodbending. <laughs> um, uh, the first strike uh, does not hit, but the second one does. 
Uh, that's going to be nice. Wow. Okay. Of course, it's the damage that he can't shrug off that is a bunch. Yeah, you see, you see a, a good chunk. He, he wasn't ready for that, and uh, a big chunk gets taken out. Just kind of slash across the side. Uh, but as soon as the two strikes go, the body just collapses to the ground. Um, so this thing is dead, and I got to subtract some heat points. Perfect. Yeah. <sighs> And he kind of looks back at the group of you um, and that's going to bring, oh, actually that was Morticia's full turn. Um, so it's going to bring us to Tita. Tita, uh, great. what are you doing? You can see two of them running around the corner and right at the, the glass next to where you are, you can see um, one of those purple skinned creatures just on the glass. It's, Please help us. Um, how far away are those uh, two guys? Um, they are about 35-ish feet, I would say. Um, can I put those gauntlet things? I don't even know what they do, but can I put the things on that Gert gave me? Yeah, it would be your entire turn to do that. You'd have to put her down and then like kind of put them on, but you can certainly do that. Um, <clears throat> I will, I will in fact do that. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, you kind of like lay her down gently, quickly put these on these heavy nah, metal Nah, I just gauntlets. toss her to the floor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> these heavy metal gauntlets that are massive for your hands. As you put your hand inside the first one, it begins to form fit down to your, your arm. Ooh. Um, and it turns from metal to almost like a leather over your carapace Yo. um, on both arms, or your two upper arms. Oh my God, does it match my vest? <laughs> uh, actually, it's leather, so yeah, it would. Yeah. Um, you can, if you would like to go into uh, uh, equipment and find bracers of defense and equip those, it gives you a plus two to your armor class. I was wondering how he was going to fit his pincers in the little thingies. <laughs> yeah, they, they, yep, they uh, fit, form fit down to Tita's arm. So that's your entire turn. After they form fit and you're kind of looking at them, you could hear the footsteps getting closer and I assume you start to pick Noga team back up. Yes. Okay. Do I have to add two of those separately or I just do it once and it counts for the thing, both of them? Uh, I think you have to attune it. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. After Tita is Zaxa. Zaxa, you are up. Hmm. Well, it <laughs> suddenly looks a lot different in this hallway than it did moments ago. Yes. Um, if you'd like, you can make a perception check. Uh, I don't think I need to make a perception check. I think I... Uh, Need to shoot a chromatic orb at the red guy. Woo! Ooh, all right. Also at third level. I believe that's going to be a disadvantage, level. though, as you have many it levels. Is, it is going to be at disadvantage. Yeah, I don't think it would have hit even with a regular roll. What do you got? <laughs> uh, nine. Nine, no. Uh, yeah. what, what elements just for flavor did you choose? Mm, delicious. Um, hmm. Uh, definitely would have gone with, um, ice. Definitely. Definitely ice. ice. Yep. All right. Yeah. You see the, the ball of ice just rocket past him and it, it, it looks like it's a straight up trajectory right for him. And he just like slowly moves his head out of the way and just sh 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 and shatters behind him uh, on the far wall outside the, the hallway. Take this guy. I just kind of smiles at you with his like pointed teeth in all directions. Um, anything else, Zaxa? I knew the spell was useless. Uh, <laughs> so first time, oh no, that's the second time he's used that. That's right, it hit the, the giant 
tentacle thing earlier in the underwater. Not useless then. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, it looks pretty useless from where I was standing. <laughs> uh, no, nothing, nothing else, I don't think. All right. Um, as that happens, uh, Tita, you hear in the back of your mind once again, it looks like I will have to take matters into my own hands. Can I say something out loud again? Be sure. You don't even have hands, Crean. <laughs> <laughs> And, and with that, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> um, I don't know why you think he doesn't have hands. He does have hands. Yeah, wasn't he like a floaty blob thing? No, he, he is a, a, <laughs> a Githzerai like all the others. He just floats like he's meditating. Oh, well, he's Tita. So when he saw him all like, homie, show me, he was probably like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> I refuse to believe he has hands. No, he looked like a no, no, no hands. <laughs> he, has, he has no hands. It's fine. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we will be back in about 15 minutes. Enjoy those bios. Uh, let's see what, uh, what more trouble these guys get themselves into. It's looking good at the moment, but like I mentioned, they hear more footsteps. So we'll see you in a few. All right, a lot's happened, but I don't want to talk about it more than I have to. Here's all I have to report. After accidentally releasing the entity from the center of the elemental chaos, my crew and I traveled to the planet Isgard to make some repairs on our ship. Isgard used to be my home before I lived on the Halo ship with the Spite team, a tactical team of six ASMR created by... by the angelic solar of knowledge, Azazio. So, setting foot on Isgard felt like a much-needed return at first. Of course, it wasn't too long before I ran into trouble. As some of my allies have surely been able to figure out by now, I have a memory issue, to put it lightly. On Isgard, I encountered someone who claimed to recognize me, and what were his words? I'll kill you if I ever see you again? Something like that. I had no idea who this person was, but he wore a mask very similar to mine, and he was very, very angry. Turns out he was called Number One, and was the leader of an organization known as the Obsidian Order. I apparently used to serve this order, going by the designation Number Six. <laughs> I'm glad I chose a better name for myself once I woke up. Anyway, despite Number One threatening to end my life should he see me again, I allowed myself to be captured by the order with the intent of deceiving them and rescuing another one of my allies they had wrongfully captured. Little did I know that my own crew was mounting their own rescue mission for me. And I supposed it all worked out in the end. A ship with my own crew caught up to the ship I was on with the Obsidian Order just as we all came to the wreckage of a third ship. Unfortunately, it was one I recognized. The Halo ship with my former spite team. It had been torn apart by a gargantuan earth elemental. A few of my teammates, well, um... I'm not sure if I even could have protected them if I was there. I did find one of my teammates alive and awake, though, Nolgatame. Apparently, she used to work for the Obsidian Order, too, under the name Number Four. Violent, angry, a drunk for power, Number One was relentless in finding her. I got to Nolgatame first, but I still couldn't stop her from joining him. She was very important to him, and he was able to restore her memories. All that time I knew her on the Halo ship, I hadn't even known her memories were gone too. A fight ensued, Number One deemed me more a nuisance than an ally, and tried to make good on his word of killing me. Now, I may be the one who's not able to remember much, but clearly he forgot how much of a fight I can give. He ran away in the end, teleported away, actually, with Nolgit- <sighs> With Number Four by his side. I have no idea where either of them are now. But I convinced one of Number One's allies to abandon him and join me, and my crew killed the rest of his order in their endeavor to rescue me. So, if I do cross paths with Number One again, well, I just hope it's not soon. But anyway, One and Four retreated, my crew had found me, and the Halo ship was in pieces. Olve was dead, Onlum was dead. Zanessi was close to being dead when I found her, but we managed to get her to safety. I thought that Modi was dead for quite a while too, but turns out he wasn't on the Halo when it got attacked. He was able to regroup with all of us on Isgard, and I have to admit that having him and Zin around has been a light in a dark void. But oh, everything else is so dark. 
Plonk is no longer with our crew. She's not dead, but she... well... The entity that emerged from the elemental chaos came for her. Tita and I tried to stop it, but... Whatever that thing is, it's a kind of power I can't contend with. Yet. I can only hope that Plonk is okay wherever in the galaxy she is. I just... Her departure weighs on me. I can't help but feel like I often fail to protect people important to me. Or, at the very least, people I'm charged with. Some leader I am. I can't imagine what in the hells Azazio was thinking when he made me the captain of my own crew. And speaking of, Azazio seems to have gotten himself into some trouble as well, if the gruesome vision of him in my dream held any truth anyway. But I don't know how to feel, because now I have reason to believe that he took my memories. That is all I have to report. First entry off Verdalk. My life was saved today. I was teleported out of a poisonous coffin onto a ship. The ship works off the elves' magic, but it's also technologically superior to anything on Verdalk. I found a book at the excavation site, as well as an interesting bag. I believe they are both magical. More research is needed. I'm to go with these new humanoids I've never seen before. We're supposed to stop something from happening? Ugh. For once, I don't know what's going on. Entry 2. The others I've been traveling with are, well, useful in their own ways. Two fighting types and a small thief. Good for protection, I suppose. I have discovered that the book I found is a spell book. The text is difficult to decipher, but I've been fairly successful. Entry 3. We failed. The elemental chaos we were sent to protect was destroyed, and an entity of energy burst forth from it. I am unsure of what this means. But I saw the impossible depths begin to freeze over. I fear the worst. Entry 6. We've made it to Isgard. We need to get a job to get credits to get our ship fixed. Such things are beneath me. There are Tritons here. They might be able to tell me about the state of Vidalk. I must travel to Muswelheim. A city under the water. Entry 10. Minerva has sacrificed herself for our safe passage. Those mercenaries took her to their hideout. I don't think they know who they're dealing with, the fools. We know where they are, and we know how to hit them. I'm starting to enjoy these frivolous battles. Entry 15. We are returning to Isgard, having successfully retrieved Minerva, as well as gaining a few new allies. Captain Strang, Zinesi, and another Vidalkin, Vunisa. At this point, I've taken a life, but I've also saved Kubrick. Perhaps I should leave the heroics to the fighters. Entry 20. Now Plonk has been taken by the same entity that we released. This group's failures are outweighing the successes. I can no longer trust Minerva or Tita to protect me. I must learn more from my book. The progress is slow, but it seems more reliable. What am I supposed to be doing again? <coughs> oh, right, right. Updating you about what I've been up to or whatever? Honestly, Green, a lot's been going on. I mean, I know I told you about my family already and how I have my great-granddad t sips pickaxe with me because I used to be an excavator back on Pandemonium. Yeah, I say used to because I don't know if I'll ever do that again. 
been zipping around actually I don't even know where with this group. Speaking of the group, they're fine, I guess. Not sure what I'm gonna do now though that Plonk is gone. She was my sidekick, you know? He used to carry her around everywhere with me. I mean, she was actually pretty frail and small. We got into so much trouble. Like that time we were messing around in the escape pod and then actually detached from the ship. Totally wild. Good thing I played that stellar video game so much, because I feel like it kind of trained me how to fly that thing. Another thing that's far out is this totally hot girl I met. And by hot, I mean she was literally made of fire. So fro and sexy cream. Totally burned me though. We messed around a few times, and then she just took off on a stolen ship. Guess that's why her name's Bernadette. So, I know you know I love smoking moss and making bongs. Damn, come to think of it, I've broken two already since I've been here, Crean. Lost Genevieve early. <laughs> Rest in peace, Jenny. And Riz, oh, so stellar. Rizzoli, our time was cut so short, girl. Too short. Speaking of moss, I almost forgot. I got a little daring and bought this, uh, other stuff. A spray. Totally crazier trip, Crean. We are out at this nightclub. Got this totally stellar vest to wear. I look fresh as frell in it. Wait, what was I talking about? Anyway, who knows? We're gonna get caught up in something next, whatever that is. I think we're going to Zox's planet soon. He's pretty sure it's frozen over. Dren like that is happening everywhere, Crean. I heard some planetary news report that Pandemonium is under siege. Thrys and Fours fighting over surface territories? Sounds crazy to me, Crean. Hey there, my name's Zanessi, soon for short if that's what you prefer. I'm what you might call an inventor of sorts. My vast knowledge surrounding magical technology allows me to design and create new items that can help make everyone's lives a little easier. One of my more known devices is a universal winged utilizer. Perhaps you heard of it. Anyway, I'm from a smithing guild in Brightwater, namely the Marketplace Eternal. I'm not much for the whole buying and selling of things, so my purpose was mostly just to make what was being sold. I also enjoyed sneaking into the back rooms of shops and observing what others were making. When I wasn't doing that, I was busy making inventions of my own. I think one of my favorites is definitely the gravity neutralizer. I've been inventing for as long as I can remember. Countless hours at the library, poring over books about alchemy, welding, circuits, enchantments, anything I could get my hands on. When I wasn't in the library, I was sitting at my pa's workbench and tinkering with my new inventions and tweaking blueprints. I still remember my first invention. Long hours of editing and finalizing blueprints, testing prototypes, and eventually fixing prototypes. So thrilling. I guess that's what got Guild interested in me to start. Been working for them for a little while now. My spike team was pretty solid. Now, after what happened with the Halo ship and all the loss that came with it, things have been turned upside down for me. I've joined Minerva and her crew for a bit, and Kubrick's been helping me keep my mind busy. With everything as confusing as it is, I only wish that I was able to think the way I could before all this happened. Maybe then I'd be able to wrap my head around it a bit better. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is with great humility that I come to you to beg forgiveness for the wake of damage ah, that uh, Miss Strang, I'm simply interviewing you. What's that now? This isn't the court, which, by the way, you are doing next week. Mm. So, Captain Strang, tell me how you got where you are currently. Oh, that business. Well, that's a horse of a different color. Let's see now, where to begin? Oh, yes. What am I doing here with these folks? Well, I can't help but be attracted to the miasma of chaos, which is why this current band of jolly travel buddies piqued my interest. I suppose I just gravitate to the crazy, so to speak. Ever since I was a young lady, I had a thirst for entertainment. Seeing it, being it. Which certainly kept things interesting. My mother loved my imagination, my charisma. May she rest in peace, that darling loving soul. My father, on the other hand, well, let's just say that he didn't share my love for the theater. Young ladies are not meant to be heard, and they're meant to be admired. Gross. Being preened to fit into high society was a real awakening. 
My father looked so proud every time I would perform like the young debutante he expected. Yet I found the whole dog and pony show to be tired and antiquated. So I went to college, expanded my horizons, met my match, my aquatic eagle. Classic story, really. We meet, we fall in love. We make grand plans together and alas, duty and status destroy your hopes and dreams. She was the very beginning and end of my taking anything seriously. But I digress. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger and all that garbage. My father gifted me a ship when I was of age and I set out for the great unknown. I grew up, grew out, and lost my way. As my reputation precedes me, I tend to be known as one who indulges in liquid courage as a means to an evening's end. If I can't be truly happy, then why not forget the whole day entirely? Nobody wants to get close to the drunk clown. It gets dark sometimes. Lonely. And then, lo and behold, I happen upon these creatures, thrown together by circumstance, bound by honor to protect one another. I admire their connection. I crave it. So to be concise, I find myself following these folks like a shadow because, well, I like them. It is a great benefit of life to be able to choose a family. Can only hope I don't drop a turd in the punch bowl. And welcome back. All right, so uh, I updated the map a little bit here. Uh, we're about to jump right back in. Uh, the start of the round <clears throat> with Emmy. Ooh. Emmy, you're currently uh, hunkered down at the very back end of one of the cell blocks. Uh, with all of the prisoners from this block. You've kind of congregated and you're all together. What would you like to do? Okay. Can I hear anything else going on? Uh, you are pretty far away. Give me a, you heard like a fire explosion. Uh, you could hear all kinds of different like sword clangs and whatever else, but um, give me a perception check. See if you hear And then anything. a ballista firing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a natural one. Ooh. <laughs> the, good thing, the good thing about that is you get a uh, another if. That brings this amp to 11. We're going to turn it up to 11. Nice. Which I have just updated. Um, all right. So what would you, you don't hear anything besides like the, the sounds of combat. They seem to have slowed a bit, but there's still something going on for sure. Okay. Um, can I turn to... He's very Let upset about this battle. Yeah. Let him speak. That's going to keep going on, so I'm just going to talk over it. Yeah, do it up. I'm going to say that... <laughs> so help me! I took that as a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that uh, I want the, the dwarf that I gave the key to. Yeah. I want to come up with like a, a safe word. Sure. With him. And I'm going to say that it's, I'm going for a random word. Uh, the word is mug. Mug. If he says mug, mug. Or if I say mug, then let everybody out and find me. Mug, mug, got it. I will do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's your that's your turn. Can I also? Uh, is that an action, or can I move as closely as I can to uh, where I thought everybody was? Yeah, you can. You can move uh, your speed thirty feet. Sure. Okay, which isn't far. Or I'm just gonna guess on this. Map. I would say that's probably about a little more than halfway across the. Uh, I, I don't even know that you'd be able to get there. I'd say it's kind of like a little uh, more than halfway across the cell block. So, oh, okay. I would. I'll, I'll put you. I would say you're probably. <laughs> yeah, well, you know that's that's kind of pushing you further back than you need to be because you were over here. So, oh, okay. I wasn't sure where the door was. Well, there's you can kind of walk through each of these cell block things. So oh. I'd say you can get to about, yeah, you could probably get to about here. 
So can I see anything like after I move? Um, looking, yeah, if you take a, a you kind of pop your head out around one of the cells, looking down the hallway at a bit of a distance, you can't see any people. Um, you might actually might be able to see the back of Modi. Other than that, you do see an Eldritch Cannon uh, that is just kind of hovering there, uh, aimed down the hallway. Other than that, nothing else. All right, so classic us. So yes. I'm going to wait and for my next turn, yes. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> it is the prisoner's turn. They're just kind of waiting there, waiting for your keyword, your secret word. Um, after they go, uh, Modi's like, all right, uh, I, I hear uh, a lot of more, a lot more footsteps. Um, uh, maybe we should regroup. Uh, and he's like, I don't really have a wall in my arsenal right now, but uh, I could definitely, uh, definitely help someone out with some healing, or I can save it to attack. Up to you. It's just I mean, to we everyone. We could stand to regroup for sure. Heal me. All right. And he'll run up. Okay. And kind of like <laughs> past Kubrick um, and touch your shoulder and let's see is he going to waste a spell or is he going to use his other ability uh, he's going to use his other ability um, how how hurt do you look uh, I, I, I look pretty bad I've got less than half health alright so he will give you this Hopefully it rolls high. Uh, he gives you nine hit points. I hope that uh, hope that takes the edge off. <laughs> after after Modi, it's your turn, Greyhod. Um. So we're just fighting this this mind flayer, red guy. Yeah, he's kind of standing in the doorway, making it so you can't leave. I'm going to use my own healing spell on myself. Ooh. Okay. Which is going to be healing word second level. So 2d4 plus... Three. Three, yeah. So I don't have a D4. Should I roll one D8? No, I got it. Okay. If I can get my freaking D4s out. Here we go. Uh, that is, uh, you said plus three? Yes. So nine more. So what are you currently at? 37. Okay. Not too shabby. Oh, I can't change it on here. I have to do it on here. Um, all right. Anything else, Greyhot? I believe that was your bonus action. All right. I'm gonna yell. I'm not. I'm not with them. I'm not with them. And I'm gonna run towards the intersection away from the mind player guy because I'm aware that he is probably not very friendly to me, regardless. Okay. If you want, you can use your action to double move because you will yeah. get a bonus to do that. All, stuff. all of my actions are going towards getting away from that guy. All right. Yeah. You pretty much make it right to that uh, cross area of the hallway. All right. Can I look Open. down the hallway down or, or just around? I'm, I'm looking to get to... I can't see the doorways. At the top of the hallway, you see where there's like the guards and um, Gherkin is over there. Oh, that's a completely different room. Okay. There's no, sorry, there's no way into there. The hall where Emmy is, uh, the hall kind of goes up a little bit more, but it ends at that wall. I know it's, it's hard just, on this, this map. All right, I'm going to stay put here, and I think that's going to be it for me. All right. After Greyhawk, Minerva, you are up. Amazing. All right. Um... So, like, uh, the ones that we've killed so far, are any of the bodies left over, slash, do any of them have a, a, a blade, a melee weapon, or anything? They each had melee weapons and some sort of, like, laser shooters. Okay. All right. Um, 
Am I able to, w would it be an action to like take one from one of them? Um, I would say you could, that would just, you're just picking it up. It's not All like, right. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I definitely, I want to move closer to one and I want to pick, pick up another, another scimitar or whatever it is that they might have so that I can have blade in each hand. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm assuming that takes me like in this direction, kind of. I was going to say, yeah, you'd, you'd have to be yeah. definitely get closer to a uh, creepy guy. Awesome. All right. Um, and it's, it's still dark over here. Like once I'm out of the light. Um, it's, yeah, I would say there's some slight dim light. Like it's definitely, you know, it's, it's not completely dark, but yeah, it's, it's okay. darker. All right. Uh, so I want to, I want to. Does does it look like there's an area over here that is dark enough for creatures to rely on dark vision? Because if not, I'm gonna run in a different direction. <laughs> um, you yeah, it's you, you think you might be able to in the shadows, yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna find that spot and I'm gonna wait, and I am again going to hold my action until the mind flare comes closer to me. Okay. All right. I also, ooh, wait, can I do, if I do Hunter's Mark, is he gonna know, like, he's not gonna know where I am. He's just gonna know that he's marked. Um, yeah. What is, is it a somatic or is it verbal? What is the? Uh, Hunter's Mark is, I think, I wanna say it's just verbal. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just verbal. Ah, okay. So um, I would say, just try to make a stealth check because you have to you have to speak to cast it. So he would he might know where you are if you're not quiet. So I would say try to make a stealth check in casting it. Okay. All right. And then in doing this, since it's a bonus action, I can still like hold my action. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Just kill all my creatures. No problem. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, my stealth is. 11 plus 4, 15. Okay. Um, you, as you kind of duck into the shadows and kind of look over to see if he notices, you see him kind of like um, click a little button and this thing goes right in front of one of his eyes. And he kind of like peers out and he's like, I see you. <laughs> Still marked though. <laughs> yep. Gherkin's turn. Number one, face to face with a couple of these guys, he's just gonna go ape shit crazy. He's just gonna start slamming. He's gonna use his final key point to flurry of blows. And here we go. All right, Gurk. <sighs> What's his bonus? Because that wasn't a very high roll. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. Next one, and the final one. Um, okay, so let me roll some damage. Oh, plus this radiant stuff, oh boy, okay. So that's... Okay, and then the second attack would do the same. All right, so you just, uh, you see one of one of them just get annihilated, just its face crushed in. Um, and then he takes that one and he slams it into the second one, uh, like slams him into the second one to cause damage. Um, and as, he, oh, actually the only one of them he needed against that guy, because that guy was already damaged. So the second one goes against him, minus... And then he, and then his final one against this guy. Ooh, yeah. And then this one, he just, with this, the guy he's holding, he kind of swings him around and just slams him into uh, this other guy. And as, uh, and as he goes and he does this, he goes to punch at the same time. But the creature, as he's getting thrown about and slammed, kind of holds up his blade and it ends up cutting Gherkin in the hand uh, as, on his one of his final strikes, causing a little bit of damage to Mr. Gherks. 
Um, okay. Not too shabby. He destroyed both guys that were right in front of him on his turn. Um, and that's Gherkin. Uh, so you, Zinn, again, you hear those same creatures. Please, please. We, we, we don't want to be left here, please. Um, there's other, there are other prisoners in other cell blocks that can hear and see all this going on. And you can hear various different uh, races and whatnot yelling out genders like, please help us, help us. Um, but yeah, that's that. Uh, Kubrick's turn. Kubrick is going to move up and pick up one of those, uh, one of the additional scimitars that are there. And he is going, uh -oh. <laughs> he is going to, oh, I can't quite get there fully. He's almost to that. Actually, can he use it? Hold on. Let's make sure. Good Mr. Kubrick. Um, okay. Yeah. He can't quite get there. So as he's stepping up to this creature, he's going to look back at Minerva, Morticia, and Modi, who are all right there. Um, and you all feel like this, this radiant energy fill into you and you feel like you could go, you could, you could fight for, for uh, you know, a few more rounds. Uh, you get currently, you are blessed. You get a D4 to attack rolls, saving throws. Uh, yeah, uh, until his concentration drops. Does he know where I am? I don't know if I get that. <laughs> Um, you had a fifteen, right? And stuff. Yeah, like if he's if he's using dark vision, he can't see me. All right. Well, then he'll bless himself because there's. <laughs> uh. So yeah. So uh, Kubrick, he's just ready. He's got that sword. He's ready right in front of this creature. Um. And then yeah, you all get blessed. So he's ready to go. After Kubrick. I was on that one. You were saying who got it. What? I was, no, I, I thought you said something else. Um, Tita, Nolgatim in your arms, as you, uh, as you're starting to pick her up. She's, again, she's just kind of out of it and her, whole, her head rolls back. She's like, it's never ending. It'll, it'll never end. Um, yeah, and that brings us to the gift. Now, we've got a lot of them. Guys, as I mentioned before, you heard footsteps. Yeah. And you see uh, down the hall, you can see this red-skinned mind flare kind of step aside. And you see a hulking, very large, brutal-looking Gith Yankee kind of step in great sword in one hand, just also wearing the blue emblem for the Drudgers. Um, and as he begins to step in kind of right in front of where Kubrick is, uh, a bunch of other soldiers begin to file in around him and start to fill the area again. Oh, Coop. <laughs> well, it was nice knowing that guy. It was uh, nice knowing the him. big guy just walks directly up to Kubrick, picks up his greatsword and just two giant swings into him. See how Kubrick's got for ugh, not a high. Does his AC. hat turn into some type of shield or something? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a secret we don't know about. Um, unfortunately, for hat, Kubrick, like... <laughs> no. <laughs> um, get the Yankee Knight. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, both of those hit Kubrick for sure. Well, nice knowing him. <laughs> I, was it though? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, minimum damage for the slashing for the first one. And almost minimum damage for the uh, psychic. So we got. So 80 points of damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kubrick only suffers 14 points of damage from the first one. Well, was it a nerf sword? <laughs> <laughs> but then the second strike also hits him. Oh, for more. For definitely for more. The first one went e -er when it hit him. Yeah. I love that this is Kubrick's combat debut as well. 
Uh, he also has to make two concentration checks to see if he can concentrate on blasts that he just blessed everyone with. Uh, oh! That's a success on both! Okay. Kubrick. All right. Or, okay. Killing it right now, Coop. Um, does this guy moving close to me trigger my held action? Um, yeah, yeah, I'll say that. Or which one would you like to strike out at? There's one kind of across the hall and then one kind of moving up close to you. Uh, yeah, no, just the one, the one that's getting a little too close to me because I, I don't like that. Mm, um, yep, advantage on the attack. Amazing. All right. Um, and since it's the attack action, like I still get two, yes. two swings of the sword, right? Yes. Okay, so the first one... First one's a 24. Yeah, hits. All right, so he's going to take 10 points of damage from that. Nice. Second attack. Second attack is a 21. That hits. So he's going to take six points from that, and then... Oh, no, he's not Hunter's Marked. All right, so, yeah, he takes 16 points of damage total. Okay, yeah, he's definitely uh, below half. He's looking hurt. These two swipes out of the darkness. He's like, ah, oh, not prepared for it. Nice. Um, uh, that was your held action. So yeah. that brings us to, oh, the rest of these guys have to go. These two are going to move right up to you and swing out. Uh, that is an 11 and a 17. The 17, yeah, the 11, no. Okay, so this one is, oh, not terrible. Uh, six psychic and uh, five slashing for the first, for that attack. The second one against you, um, that is a 10 and a 21 to hit. So obviously the 21 does, 10 does not. Yeah. Uh, so that's nine psychic and five slashing. Okay. Um, and then we got one of these guys is going to swipe at Kubrick because he just barely gets in range. Uh, ooh, that's one hit for sure. I think Kubrick's going down. Bye, Coop. <laughs> yeah, you just see another slash go right across Kubrick. <sighs> And Kubrick falls unconscious to <gasps> Coop. There he goes. And I can't turn him for whatever reason, so we're just gonna make him ouchy colors. Ouchy, ouchy colors. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go. That's an we'll official go. term. <laughs> yeah, ouchy colors. Kubrick ouchy colors. Um, all right. <clears throat> so that's there we go. Right oh, lies. We got some up top with uh, Gherkin and Tita. So these three are going to move in toward Gherkin. Two of them are going to be able to get up next to him and begin to swipe in. The other one will fire. First one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Always a good. <laughs> you just see one of the guys swipe out at Gherkin and Gherkin kind of uses his elbow and just kind of nudges his arm and the, the blade just the, the head right off of his ally. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, and then, but one of them does hit Gherkin. Before his head falls off. <laughs> his, his head hits him. <laughs> Gherkin is looking very hurt. Gurgan takes 12 points of damage from the flying head. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, yeah, the other guy misses firing. It's just it's him and these two guys still. Uh, the other two begin to charge. Uh, well, they're moving around the corner. They start to move up. They get to about this point right here, Tita. Um, and hey. they can't quite make it to the edge. Um, but you do begin to hear foot, other footsteps coming into the room. And making their way down. Okay, um, after there go, that brings us to the Mind Flayer. So, what will he do? What crimes will he commit? That's right. 
Mm. Yeah, you could hit a lot of you with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, yeah. Uh, he is going to, this is going to be a hard shot because he has to fire over his own allies. Uh, so he's going to have disadvantage. Uh, but I feel like he wouldn't care about that, though. No. <laughs> yes and no. It's still, it's unity. They, they you know, they, they may be uh, evil creatures, but they still, you know, watch out for one another. Um, all right. So he is, yeah, he is going to attempt a, a shot where he fires. You see this, uh, as it fires out of his, his gun, you see this, like, orb that's, like, kind of, like, fluctuating, and it flies over the allies. Oh yeah. And it lands on the ground in between Minerva. Betwixt. In betwixt. Uh, Minerva, one of his own allies, Morticia and Modi. And as it hits the ground, it explodes out in this black, like thick ichor, almost like a tar, uh, to hold everyone in that area in place. I need strength saving throws from everyone. Wait, even me? Uh, no, no, just the before I said. I'm like, I'm not over there. What? <laughs> Morticia kind of like, uh, uh, she, looks like, she looks like she's struggling, but she's succeeding. She's pulling her feet out of this thick black ichor. Modi's like, uh, I can't get out of this, man. Um, and the other creature, uh, the other one kind of just uses his blade and she, she cuts it at it and kind of steps out uh, as if unaffected. How'd you do, Minerva? 18 plus four. Yeah, easy. You just kind of, you block most of it and then kind of pull your feet free from the rest of it. Um, it that was his go. So Zin, you're up. Yeehaw, partner. So the first thing that I would like to do is I want to cast, you said he's like 60 feet away? Uh, he's, he was I would say 60 feet away from your cannon. Okay, so then I'm going to move up to where my cannon is. Sure. Um, and I would like to cast Shatter centered on him. And then that is Ooh. nice. 10 foot sphere. So anybody? Uh, that yeah, it's good. I would get him and three of the others, two of which are regular foot soldiers, but then also the knight. Radical. So all of them need to make con saves. On save. All right. We got red face, tentacle face. So he's good. Um, I hate that man. <laughs> <laughs> we got a uh, uh, big night man. Uh, oh, that might maybe, maybe not. He said con save. Yes. Um, oh, maybe not. As f I got 14 total for him. That just saves. Just saves. All right. So the other two. Uh, oh, geez. They both save as well. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh my god anyway, so you still do damage i know but out. <laughs> i hate this game i'm quitting wait did they take did they take extra because you're still all angel mode and stuff yeah they take an extra <gasps> yeah <laughs> yeah they take Forget extra damage <laughs> oh wait f that was only one all right, 12, 6. Uh, that's 18 plus the 6, so 24? 24. Oh, all right, so reduced to 12. Yeah. Nice. So she does that. Yeah, just bear with me. I got to do all there. Hit the points. Wait, which one is that? I can't even tell. Okay, that's that one. I gotta make a bigger map next time. This is <laughs> this is rough. <laughs> All right, nice job. That was a significant amount of damage spread among four people. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but. She still has her bonus action, so the cannon is going to go off. 
Nice. Pop off. Um, I'm really mad at the red man and I really want to try to hit him again, but he's like behind all of these people. Does that give me a disadvantage? Uh, it wouldn't be disadvantage, but he definitely has some cover. So his AC would be higher. I hate it here. Okay, fine. Yeah. Then I'll... <laughs> Uh, whichever one is closest to me. I want to knock him down like Dom. Yeah, there's uh, there's one that's kind of charging up toward Modi right now. Oh, I'm going to hit that. <laughs> and you're right. I'm going to hit that. <laughs> Not in a sexy way. <laughs> Never. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Mistakes are messy for a heterosexual. Uh, with um, a ballista is the sexiest way to hit someone. You're right. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's just not going to hit because it's only an eight. No, <laughs> you know it is not. Unfortunately, you fire out and it's just and then it hits the wall and just against the wall uh, kind of so off to the side. Good. Rubble just falls down on top of Kubrick's unconscious body. <laughs> right. um, and then to finish off my turn, I just want to say like kind of to nothing because I don't even know if this guy can hear me but when I made fun of his name earlier I got a little shiver so I'm just gonna say listen I know that you know what's happening right now this is insanity you need we need to talk there are other ways for this to happen okay um give me can I add to that sure would you like to say? I know your language bounty hunters I've got credit <laughs> All right, uh, Zinn. Well, that's what he is, right? A bounty hunter? I mean, that's their well, full money. The, the red-skinned creature, yes, is a bounty hunter. The one that Zinn is talking about right now is the enlightened one, the leader of this whole place, who's not currently in the room. Oh, okay. I miss You can that. still try to bribe, on your turn, you can still try to bribe this guy if you want. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> All right, so Zin, give me a, um, hmm, what does I say for this? Give me a, give me a wisdom check. Okay, please, 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 please. Let me please. just roll one good roll tonight. Please, 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 please. please. Better. <laughs> Hold. Uh, wisdom check would be. Where'd pencil go? Okay, that's 13 altogether. 13. I will mark that down. We. Uh, okay. All right. Anything else? I think that's everything, right? That's it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> after Zinn, we come to Morticia. What is she going to do? Um, where is she? She wants to get up to that big guy. Yeah. Question is... Okay. How... <laughs> There's a little traffic in the way. Yeah. She's not gonna be able to get there now. She's, yeah, she's just going to have... Unfortunately, she's just going to have to move up to uh, one of these guys and start swinging. She can't really get too far. So yeah, she's going to start swinging. Uh, but before she does... You see her make like a symbol across her chest and the creature that she's about to attack, this red energy just flies out and clings to him. Uh, and then she begins berating him with sl uh, slashes. Uh, it's one hit, one miss. So that is, oh. And is he engaged with someone else? Uh, Minerva is there, so he gets another sneak attack. Okay, not too shabby. Uh, the one right in front of Morticia takes a couple, uh, one big slash, and you see that uh, he's, he goes like, oh! he's like barely hanging in there. Uh, but yeah, she can't do much else other than that. So Tita, you are up. Ah. You currently have uh, two guys who are just starting to round the corner and begin to see you as you just lift Nolgatame back up. How far away from me are they? 
Um, they are about 15-ish feet. Um, great. <laughs> well, I'm still carrying her, so that halves all of my everything. Indeed it does. Um, cool. So that's not going to really help. <laughs> um, and I have nothing on me, correct? Like weapon thing. Uh, you don't have your pickaxe. That was confiscated. Uh, you Well, technically you are a weapon. So your whole body. Uh, yeah, is yeah. I just mean additional things. No, you have no other physical weapons or anything. Um, okay. Um, um, I will put her down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then move toward those people. Sure. You can get right up to that front one. Yeah. Get a bra. Can I? Why well, don't leave her in the middle of the hall? Put her like against the wall or something. Okay. <laughs> didn't specify, so I just put her down. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna lean prop her up against the wall, like she's all in crazy town still. All right. Yeah, rocking um, back and forth. So I'm gonna get right up to that dude, and I guess I'm gonna try to like un unarm strike him because there's no way I'm gonna get around these people while I'm carrying her. So. All right, on arm strike, do it up. You get two regular attacks. Uh, 16 plus 521. That hits. Okay. So that is four points of damage. Wow, so great. Uh, as he brandishes his weapon, you kind of just <laughs> quick one to the to the gut, and he's like, ah, kind of keels over for a second. Second attack. Cool, cool. Only a nine. Nine does not hit. Yeah. Um, are you doing anything else? Are you using any key points? Uh, no, because I only have one left, so I'm going to wait on that. That's rough. All right. Um, can I, well, wait, how far? No, forget it. Yep. I'm just going to stand there and wait, I guess. All right. After Tita, Saxa, your turn. Cool. So, uh, you remember that spot that, um, Zanessi wanted to use shatter. Yeah. And got all those guys. Yeah. I'm going to use that same spot and do magnify gravity again. Ah. At a second level. Okay. So which two are you trying to hit? I would say it's a 10 foot radius. Yes. Uh, I, you could, you could definitely choose. Um, there's two foot soldier. If you're trying to get like, <clears throat> um, are you trying to get red uh, tentacle face? Oh, of course. All right. So with him, you could, I would say you could either hit uh, one of the other two soldiers on either side of him. Wasn't her shatter a 10 foot radius too? Didn't that hit like three guys? I thought you said it, you could only hit two people. Or magnify gravity? Everyone in the radius. Um, each creature in the sphere on the turn when you cast a spell must make a oh, okay. constitution saving throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you can hit all now, four. I want to I hit as many people as I can. Hit all four, yeah. All right, um, so constitution saves from everyone? That is correct. They must be to 14, which is not much. All right, here we go. We got uh, this is for the the knight. Uh, that's a fail. Cool, cool. Uh, soldier number one. Uh, that's a fail. Good, good, good. Soldier number two is a natural twenty. Of course. And finally, we've got our lovely mind flayer friend. Uh, oh, that's a fail. Ha 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 ha. Oof. <laughs> so. He did. One of them is going to take no damage because of the natural 20, but the rest of them are going to take full damage. That would be uh, 10 damage, mm -hmm. and their speed is halved until the end of their next turn. Okay, what type of damage is this? This is... 
Uh, force damage. Okay. All right. They have taken their damage. Nice job. Some significant, uh, some significant hits there. Uh, okay. Anything else, Zaxa? No, I'm not getting hit back here, and that's where I'm going to stay. <laughs> Good call. Uh, what is the range for that, by the way? Is it 120 feet? Uh, 60 feet. Um, okay. You would have to move up slightly. Then I will move up slightly. Uh, you got to get up to like where that, yeah, where the cannon is. Yeah, I'll stand. I'll stand next to the cannon. I love it. Fantastic stuff. Uh, okay, back to the top of the round. Um, the enlightened one. Uh, this time, Tita, you don't hear anything in your head, but Zin, you do. You are wise to request a parlay. I am currently on my way. Good luck until then. That's what you hear. Um, after the enlightened one, Emmy, it is your turn. I believe you are muted. Sorry about that, doggos. Um, okay, she wants to go back to the cell where she told everybody to hang tight. Yep. And she wants to um, just tell all of them, listen, I was wrong. Mug, by the way, let yourselves out. Uh, also, though, let's try and stay just a little bit quiet and uh, let's all stay together. We want to let as many people out as we can. All right. He <laughs> yells. <laughs> <laughs> you said be quiet. Okay. <laughs> what? 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 Be quiet? What? Uh, so, which cell block <clears throat> would you like to move to? Um, just to keep in mind, they have been knocking down soldiers left and right. There's probably more chips if you wanted to get them. But are any of them near me? No, no. They're all about where the fight is. Okay. So then I want to move towards the fight, I guess. Okay. Are you having the prisoners come with you? Well, I did tell them to all stay together. Okay. So they are going to, on their turn, uh, you can get a little further if you want, especially if you're just double moving. You can get probably to like here. And I want to reassure them that, well, now follow me. I have full faith that my insane friends will find a way to get us out of this. <laughs> As they turn the corner, they just see three of them standing there, just kind of <laughs> looking around. <laughs> Um, perfect. All right. So you, so you begin to bring them out, Emmy. Uh, after their turn, Modi's turn. Modi, where is he? Modi's like, oh, they're getting kind of close. I kind of want to step back a little bit. Wait, um, I thought he was stuck in the thing. Oh, he is. Thank you. He is stuck. That is true. Um, he's going to have to make strength. Check to the teacher, you for, you forgot to assign homework. Listen, I don't like it either, but like integrity. <laughs> hey, I, I will say this is the second time you've helped me and not yourself, Priya. So I'm gonna give you an actual inspiration. Aww, not just uh, an if. I don't like this any more than y'all do. That's my <laughs> boy right there, but. <laughs> Uh, Modi, ooh, Modi does not succeed. He's trying to like pull. He's extremely weak. He's not a very strong man, and he's trying to get his feet free from the ground. He's not able to. Uh, Greyhot, it is your turn. You've kind of just run up. Zox is there. There's a huge cannon kind of in your face, and Zin is hovering about ten feet off the ground. I love huge cannons in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. All right, what I want to do here is move two times and then talk. Okay. So I'm going to try this, or I'm going to get killed. <laughs> Either way. That is, that is, the, 
That is what our party does. <laughs> Try things and possibly get killed. We should make t-shirts, guys. Should make yes. t-shirts. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna move as close to the mind flayer as I can while screaming wait. Like, wait, 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 wait. All right, I'd say you could probably get about there with a double move. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, and you're you're directing this at the mind flare. Um, give me a persuasion check. No, not that nice. This one. Sixteen. Okay. And then. What would you like to do otherwise? And so it's a 17 altogether. Oh, 17 altogether. Believe it or not, that does make a difference. All right, I'll put my, my inspiration fragment in there too, just because I need this to work or I'm going to die. <laughs> okay, make it an 18. All right, I like it. Uh, fantastic. So, yeah, I'm not going to let you know until it's its turn what his uh, demeanor is toward you at the moment. Is there anything else you would like to do? Yeah. Well, did he answer me? Did he look at me? Uh, he's currently looking at you, but I'm not going to give you a reply until his turn. All right. I, I want to tell him other things. <laughs> Should I wait till I his want to whisper sweet nothings? <laughs> I should have saved my ass, yeah. <laughs> I I don't want to do anything else because what what he says in response is going to hinge on what I do. Okay. So uh, he, you say stop, stop, stop. And he doesn't seem to stop, but he says, I'm listening. So he seems at the moment to have halted and is kind of uh, waiting to hear what you have to say. However, he does not call off the others. Nor do you know that he would even have the authority to do so. Nope. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> but I'm here. <laughs> I know a bounty hunter when I see one. I know your language and I've got plenty of it. Get these guys to stop and we can talk. Trust me, I can make it worth your while. Okay. Noted. <coughs> oh, that's not a good response. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't say that. That's just a DM Aaron or GM Aaron is saying noted. Uh, uh, who's going to say? Minerva. What are you doing? You're not looking too hot. Minerva? Oh, um. Uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. What do I what do I have to do to get Modi out of this situation? <laughs> uh, you have to go over to him and use your strength to try to get him out. Amazing. All right, that's that I'm assuming that would be an action, right? Or indeed. Okay. <laughs> I'm just all trying right. to get these things out of the way so that we can move you. Yeah. Um, all right. So I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm going to do that. Uh, just uh, strength or athletics? Sorry. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it's a D it's strength check. Strength check. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, 13 plus one, 14. 14. Um, let me just double check his DC. Gonna be a nice DM. Would you like to use any ifs? <laughs> <laughs> wink, uh, wink. <laughs> oh wait, can I add my can I add my actual real inspiration to this? Uh, it would be another roll. You get advantage. I. Mm. No, I'll use the ifs. Um, I would like to add. Oh my god. 
You have six currently. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add I'm gonna add five. We're gonna make it a nineteen. Whoa! All right, nice. Uh, with a nineteen, that absolutely succeeds. You kind of grab one of his legs and you just all your might lift and with him kind of helping and pulling as well you release the first leg and then he kind of with your help ugh, gets the second one free as well nice all right what would you like to do otherwise i think i mean that 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 was that was certainly my action certainly i don't think i have an applicable bonus action so i am just going to once Modi is like free, I am going to like move to like at least just be in front of him. Between. Yeah, you're you're, you're kind of already there. Okay, all right, and I'll yeah, I'll get into that like I'm gonna protect you stance. Okay, yeah, you kind of stand right in front of him. Sure. All right, after Minerva, Gherkin's turn. Gherkin, who is not looking fantastic at the moment. All right, Peter. Real hurt. He is going to try to finish off these two. He has no more key points, so he only gets two attacks. First attack. He's not going to be able to kill both right now. No way. Um, two nat 20s. <laughs> that's true. If you get two nat 20s. All right, here's the first one. First attack. Not a nat 20, but definitely hits. Gherkin gets all of this damage. Ooh, okay. Ooh, S significant hit. Not enough to down him. Um, he's going to take his second strike and hope and pray. Mm, yes, it does hit. Oh, Gherkin. Oh my god. <laughs> Not enough. He's just barely oh, still oh, standing. That that's his cool. turn. There's not much else he can do. Guess you could say he's in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if for that? Seriously. No. No. <laughs> Negative <Come> ifs. On. <laughs> Negative point five ifs. <laughs> um yeah, you just hear uh, pleading coming from that cage in the far end there, uh, Zin. Um, that's going to bring us now to Kubrick, who needs to make a death saving throw. Okay. It's Mr. Coops, uh, after Kubrick, that brings us to Nolgatame. Uh, Tita. As well, I'm not there. holding her anymore. She's on the ground. Yeah, yeah. You see her kind of like, as you're trying to punch this guy, you see her just kind of like playing with her hands, just not uh, really seeing what's going on. And then she looks over and she sees you assa like assailing and being assailed by like this this other creature. And her demeanor switches almost like the, the switch of a, 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 like a, a, a light switch. Um, and you see this blackish gray and she just holds out her hand kind of like an iron man beam just boom, out um i need um i hope not at me like can i get out of the way oh it's it's directly toward you oh great no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> it is not toward you uh, can it I is still toward, get out of the way <laughs> toward the creature you are fighting uh she's make a melee spell attack Oh, that hits, surprisingly. Okay, okay. All right, Nolg. Um, so, Tita, the yeah. one that you hit, another mat, you see this gray energy just <laughs> into him and leaving like a big hole in his side. And he begins to, to glow with this gray energy, grayish black energy. Um, and on your next attack against it, you have advantage. Um, after Nolgatame goes, it is the Gith's turn. So we have two fighting Gherkin. I think this is the end of Gherkin. Yep. Uh, 
Gherkin goes down. Well, good thing Tita got uh, Noga team out of there. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been for nothing. Right? <laughs> wow. These guys continue to move. These guys continue to move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so this one, one of these guys down below with the larger group of you is going to try to hit more. T- or actually, two of them are going to try to hit more Tissia. Um, that's one hit, one miss. And then the other one is, woo, a natural one. Let's see if he hits his buddy. <laughs> um, all right, so. You know, when they hit their own people, it's significant damage usually. Oh, yeah. Love to see it. Oopsie. Oh, this guy died. Yeah, he killed his own guy. Oh. <laughs> uh, however, Morticia suffered. Ooh, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, Morticia takes a big uh, slice and she's uh, definitely uh, looking pretty bloodied at this point, which isn't much different from what she usually looks like. Um, Just that goth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then we got these four that are going to begin to move in past her toward everyone else. Actually, one's going to stop. One will stop there and attack her. And we'll pull these guys back. Dead Kubrick. <laughs> Dead Kubrick. <laughs> With you. All right, we got one up to Greyhawk. We got the big guy up to Minerva. And we got two small ones kind of making their way through. One is going to strike at Morticia. Uh, fail. Second one. Success. Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, that's very low. Okay. If I can get her, come on. Nope, definitely making the map bigger next time. (laughs) Morticia is looking real bad. Uh, Minerva, two massive swipes of this great sword are coming your way. Yeah, that's fine. First one is a knight. Let me go back here. Uh, Great sword. Oh, that's a 22. You know, like just, just barely. Just barely? Okay. Uh, oh boy. Um, you're resistant to stuff, right? I am resistant to necrotic and radiant damage. Okay, yeah, that's not this. Um, you're resistant to stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like in general, I'm resistant to things. 25 points. 25? Of slashing and psychic damage for the first attack. You don't You don't need to roll a second one, my dude. <laughs> Ooh, Minerva goes down. <laughs> Um, yeah, let me, this is exciting news. I get to use the death saving throw, uh, thing that I made here. Ooh. <laughs> so glad you're happy about it. I was just going to say, so glad that another so glad. member is down so you can use your little filter that you made. It's, it's a fantastic filter. What can I say? <laughs> it's been time for this. <laughs> All right. So after he goes, um, one of them is also going to try to hit you, Greyhawk. No. Uh, one of them is a six in total. Uh, the other one is a 22 in total. So the six does not hit and the 22 does. Yes. Uh, you will suffer 10 points of slashing and seven points of psychic. Well, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well- after they all go, it goes to the Mind Flayer. And the Mind Flayer looks to you, actually, no, Minerva's down. <clears throat> so he kind of smiles with gritted teeth <clears throat> uh, and says, How much are we talking to you? Name, name your price. He kind of oh. licks, licks his lips. Mm. 
I have been looking to do upgrades to my ship. Leave him be. Come, come. He, he beckons for you to come uh, toward him. And I go. <laughs> uh, yes, on your turn, you will be able to move toward him. Uh, Nessie, it is your turn. <laughs> Things are starting to take a turn for the worst. Minerva was just knocked unconscious. I don't know what you mean by starting to. <laughs> this whole episode is taking a turn for the worst. Aside from when Modi blew up the guards, <laughs> it's been nothing but bad. MVP, Modi! Really a king. king. It's not all bad. Kubrick died. Kubrick died. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Hmm. Let me take a all look. Right. Thank you. Hmm. What are we doing, Zen? Okay, so she is going to first. She's going to say um, to everybody who's still up. <laughs> uh. Uh. Everybody just defend yourselves and try to stay on your feet. I think I might have done something. Just <laughs> so after that, she is going to <laughs> try your best, okay? You're obsessed. You're supposed to have a plan and there was no plan and now everybody's dying. So, <laughs> Great. <laughs> Literally the only person to be like, we should have a plan. <laughs> I have every one. campaign that I'm ever in and it never works. All right. It was an easy one. <laughs> so next, she is going to use a spell that I have been wanting her to use for a while. She's going to cast enlarge slash reduce, and it's going to be the reduce part. Get it, Ant Man. The, the great big knight. I want him to be smaller. Oh, okay. So, uh, he has to blah 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 blah. Make a con save. Great big knight. Okay. <laughs> I failed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, he's a small boy. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay, so... He's a small uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so his, his size is half in all dimensions, and his weight is reduced to one-eighth of normal. Uh, decreases its size by one category, so medium to small, for example. Um, he also has disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, and the weapons are also smaller. And while they are reduced, the target's attacks with them deal 1d4 less damage. Um, what, are, what are the saves he has disadvantage on? Uh, strength saves. Strength saves. And strength checks. Checks. Okay. Baby, baby. <laughs> baby. He's just like, who's a baby? What is happening to me? <laughs> Uh, as he shrinks down. Um, anything else, Zin? Can she... Are there any... There probably aren't. No soldiers made it up to where she is, huh? Um, no, there are none near you. No, they're all... They're kind of blocked by Modi and Greyhot at the moment. Okay, what about dead bodies that may have chips on them? Um, there are bodies from pretty much this point where I pinged all the way to the door. Mm. All right, yeah. She's good. Okay. Uh, after Zin, it's Morticia. She is hurting something wicked. So she is going to... Let's see, what is she going to do? She kind of yells out, if anyone could possibly help me, I could use a little bit of healing. Um, and she will, uh, let's see, she was fighting that guy. Yeah, she's gonna still lay into that guy. She's fighting, uh, killing him easily. Killing him instantly. Uh, and then does she wanna use her second strike or does she want to? Uh, she is gonna make her second strike against the other one that looks pretty injured nearby. Oh, another 15 plus. Nice. 
Uh, he's not engaged, so there's no sneak attack. Kill it another one! Get it, girl! Uh, then she's going to use her bonus action to cast Expeditious Retreat on herself and run very quickly past everyone um, and around this corner. Some strikes at disadvantage. Nope. Good thing that was disadvantage. That would have been a natural 20. And the last one. Also would have been a natural 20, but all it was at disadvantage. So that was very, very good for you guys. Um, How dare you run from me? As the little one uh, <laughs> wants to move. Uh, okay, so that's going to bring us now after her expeditious retreat. That will... Br uh, yeah, that's, that's her turn. Uh, okay, so that will bring us to Tita. Um, <clears throat> first off, since, um, she did her little gray blasty thing and, you know, mere moments before she was basically like, oh, she's still it. cackling to herself and uh, uh, no, that's fine. I'm just going to have turned to her watching that guy get like that and just be like, nice one emo. And then just <laughs> turn back to the guy. <laughs> All right. Nice. Um, so I guess I will try to attack him again. Sure. Um, just He's not doing too good old, hot. that good old unarmed strike. Cause I don't have anything <laughs> on me. What's max damage for your unarmed strike? Eight? Yeah. So basically useless. So. <laughs> well, if, if you get max damage, he's down. All right. I rolled a 19 plus five. That hits. And I'm doing what with D6? Uh, five. Five, all right. Uh, he's, he's looking real bad, but he's just barely hanging on. Okay. He's kind of like wavering a little bit. Uh, you still have a second strike yep. if you'd like to take it. Oh, I sure would. Uh, 12, 17. 17, that hit, that just hits. Thank goodness. Guys. They are more heavily armored than the Gith Zerai that you fought. Uh, seven damage. Seven points, yeah, he, this time you just knock him down. Yeah, da, da, da. And... <laughs> Uh, there's only, there's just one kind of facing toward you at the moment, staring you down. Okay. Um, yeah, Nolga team does not have any range on him. She can't see him, so. Okay. Might not be able to assist, but. Uh, after Tita, Zaxa, it is oh, your Wait, can I move then? Yeah, you can, of course you can, yeah. Uh, no, I'm just going to back up a little bit more to like entice the guy to come towards me. So that way I hope that she can see him because she just blasted the other guy and this guy's clearly around the corner. So like, look at you sneaky over here. I like it. <laughs> All right, cool. Come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zaxa, it is your turn. Minerva is down, correct? Minerva is unconscious on the ground. Uh, would you say she's within 30 feet from me? No, you would have to, she's about 45, no, that's not true. She's about, uh, she's probably about like 35, 40, oh. just out of range. Um, I suck, by the way. I was supposed to have advantage on that attack and I forgot. You hit with both, right? I know, but. Um, well. Uh, I was just trying to maybe be fancy. And on like, that one, hey, listen, re-roll because it could be a 20. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Wait, so re-roll both or just one? No, just, just the first one. Right. Ah, damn, so close. No. no. <laughs> All right, thanks. What are we doing, Zaxa? <laughs> okay, so I will uh, misty step to 30 feet toward Minerva and then you we'll. Stupid shit. <laughs> what? Why are you got to be doing this stupid shit? <laughs> All right, let's see if you keep saying that after I'm done. Um, so I'm going to misty step as close as I can to Minerva and then walk the rest of the way. 
<laughs> and I am going to slowly use, just oh yep. And I'm going to use my adrenaline shot on her. Ooh, you got that in what episode two or three? That's right. I've been holding oh, on to it. Dude, please tell us what that does. I would love to. It takes one action to administer, which is fine because I used a bonus action and movement. Uh, the target creature gains 1d4 temporary hit points, which will be three. Uh, if the target is unconscious at the time of administration, the target is now conscious, but make, must make death saves as normal until they are stabilized or die. Uh, magical healing, a potion of healing, one use of a healer's kit or a successful medicine check is necessary to stabilize the target creature. Okay. So Minerva, you feel you were just on the brink. You could feel that your life was slowly slipping away. And all of a sudden you feel this just jolt of energy and adrenaline come into your body. And yeah, you're just ready to go again. Um, all right. Jackson, Get up and heal go. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Doxa, anything else? Oh, no, that's everything I can do. Okay. As you do that and you look over and you see Minerva <gasps> jolt back awake, peering through the door, you see more figures, a lot more figures, but one in particular that catches your eye, floating, hovering above the ground, maybe two, two and a half feet. Uh, actually, Minerva, you're the only one here that would recognize this being, but you see the enlightened one begin to float his way through into the room with another maybe nine or so Gith Zerai in front and flanking him in all directions. Uh, and he just floats in kind of past his bounty hunter ally. And he says, ah, oh, we shall have one final talk and if it does not go my way well you will all perish and that's where we're going to end for the evening well I am surprised everyone is still alive at this point well <laughs> actually two people are down I think we lost both our NPCs. So. Um, well, yeah, but they're not that important. As long as Minerva doesn't die, you know, we can just keep the campaign going. <laughs> what, what, mm. <laughs> if think... Minerva does die, well, we'll st still have to keep the campaign going, but just without her. Um, but no, yeah, so we are, that sticky situation. Um, you guys will have a week to now come up with ideas and prep for what's coming up next. By the way, Priya, you look fantastic with red blood all around you. And oh, amazing. That it's, it's Love fantastic. that for me. <laughs> yeah. um, but everyone, thank you so much for uh, sticking with us. Uh, you know, battles sometimes can get a little long, and this is definitely a long one, so we appreciate you sticking around. Um, we will be back next week. Don't forget Adventures of Plunk and Just the Tips on Wednesday. Um, yeah. Again, thanks for watching. We love you all. Have a great uh, weekend.